sorry, honey. It's a work thing. Mine's also a work thing. I just need someone to cover my shift. So is mine. Alan says your business vehicle is now covered with Progressive. Protected 24-7, just like your home and auto. Oh, that's great. So dinner time's just phone time now? Sorry. You know, I heard that ground turkey is the healthiest poultry. You know what? Never mind. Just be on your phones. Oh, thank so thank you. The majestic cliffs of Ireland stand on these spectacular vistas and envision greatness. It's as if there's an invitation to the adventure of a new college football season, and it lies on this leafy island. Travel down River Liffey and into the nerve center of Dublin, a city dotted with distinctive, colorful doors rooted in defiance of outside forces. One might say, unconquered, unconquered, like the Seminoles of Florida State. Bitter disappointment has festered for months, but it gives way today to a new season and new battles. Now, I know our Irish hosts might be learning the details of the sport, but they know passion, and they embrace it with open arms and open pops as Georgia Tech buzzes in, trying to get the ACC tipsy right out of the gate. So here we are on week zero, and to quote a great Irish poet, the measure of her flying feet made Ireland's heart begin to beat, and it's beating through our chest for college game day and a season in Dublin. We're gonna be live in Dublin. Georgia Tech, Florida State, I can't wait to get over there. Game Day is built by The Home Depot, proud sponsor of college football's premier pregame show, coming to you live from College Green in Dublin, Ireland. Aviva Stadium, the Seminoles and the Yellow Jackets will commence the festivities immediately following College Game Day. This stadium on the side of the old Lansdowne Road Stadium, built right in the middle of a quaint Dublin neighborhood. A spectacular modern facility on the inside. The Seminoles are reigning ACC champions, ranked 10th in the AP preseason poll, taking on a resurgent Yellow Jackets team, which under Brent Key is 4-0 all time against ranked ACC opponents. Delighted to have you with us to start another season. Week zero is here. Reese Davis alongside Kirk Herbstreet in his 29th season on game day. Desmond Howard in his 19th season. 19? 19, season. 19? Be 19 how about that? That's awesome, guys. Wow. Lee Corso will be back with us next week yeah. at College Stations. We come up the great Seminole, Lee Corso, the Sunshine Scooter. Pat McAfee is here. 
He's experienced that one so far, and we are delighted <laughs> to have seven-time national champion, perhaps inarguably the greatest coach in the history of college football, Nick Saban, be part of our team. Nick, glad to have you with us. What a way to start. First international game day. Yeah. What a way to start to get your get your feet wet with this, huh? Well, I'm looking forward to it. I'm happy to be here. This is certainly a little different approach to the season. You know, <laughs> most of the time you're sitting there saying this is the moment of truth when you're a coach. You know, your team's going to go yeah. out there for the first time and compete. But now we got hope and we can speculate on what other people are going to do. I can't wait to hear you speculate on who's going to win, who's not going to win, all the hypotheticals. We know you are jacked up about that. it. But when, you, when you talk about moment of truth, I think what you're referring to is the fact that we have real football happening today yeah. for the first time in right. months. This is a beautiful time in a wonderful town. Football's back in the... Uh, What's the crack, they say around here, and that means, like, what's the story? The story last night for me was 30 Guinnesses. So it is wow. an honor to be in this city oh, and uh, back for another year. This is the greatest show 30. on TV. Did, did, you, did you split the G on all of those 30 Guinnesses? Yeah, so you split the G is what the people do, but uh, I powered right through those normally and just made those <laughs> things disappear. And that's what you got to do whenever you're in Ireland amongst these great people. But when you talk about passion, yeah. and they might not be the biggest college football fans yet. They're starting to learn to love it. I think over here, but when you talk about being happy that people have come here and experienced a city, Ireland has been fantastic for the last week for a lot of people, the last 24 hours for me for sure, and uh, this should become an annual tradition for us, I think. 47,000 people in the stadium today, 25,000 of them visitors. They're estimating that 115 million euro pumped into the economy in Ireland as a result of this game. Ooh. Due to the exchange rate, it's about 128 million bucks. It's a lot, and it's good, yeah, and they have been great. remarkable, yeah. remarkable host, and we are ready to start this season. So what's in store with this most anticipated season in the history? There's realignment, four power conferences. Texas, Oklahoma going to the SEC, got 16 teams. You know, the Pac-12 teams, including USC and UCLA going to the Big Ten. Those old Pac-12 teams, other ones going to the Big 12, including Colorado back to the conference they last won in 2001. The ACC now stretches from coast to coast, going from Atlantic to Pacific with the addition of Cal and Stanford and also SMU. Of course, Nick Saban's with us. That means Kalen DeBoer's at Alabama. Jed Fish replaces him at Washington. And Sharon Moore in for Harbaugh, who went to the NFL with an enthusiasm unknown to mankind. Plenty of portal additions, too. Favorites have portal quarterbacks, including Oregon and Ohio State. You've got Florida State, who's now turning to DJ Uyangalule. You've got a little peek at Riley Leonard, who we'll see next week. Now playing for Notre Dame, and it's a 12-team playoff with the automatic bids for the five highest-ranked conference champions. The four highest-ranked champions get the top four seeds. Notre Dame can be seeded no higher than fifth, even if they go undefeated, just for those around here who might be following the Irish. A couple of other things you might need to be aware of. There is now a two-minute timeout in each half for some inexplicable reason. We've been threatened by the officials if we call it two-minute warning. So it's a two-minute timeout instead yeah, okay. of a two-minute warning. Yeah, it's a two-minute warning. We there's also coach-to-player communication yeah. in the helmet, which probably means that aspiring young Connor Stallions, they need to learn to intercept telecommunications now instead of deciphering signals. Yeah, I, mean, the tw I think the 12-team playoff, the hype and build of that and the anticipation of that is I think what has so many people excited. Because I think, and Coach has brought this up a number of times in our meetings, instead of just four, five, six, or 17, and this opens it up not just to 12, but 13, 14, 15. When you're battling September, October, November, you really think you got a shot. The other thing I think is cool is, Remember when he would have a team that was pretty much in, like, August, you know, okay, Bama's in. Right. I don't really feel that. Like, do you yeah. see that one team that's obvious? Everybody's got question marks, right. which I think is exciting to see who's able to gel by the time we get into conference play. Everyone has question marks, and a lot of these coaches, they try to answer those question marks during the offseason by going into the portal. A lot of high-profile quarterbacks tr uh, changed addresses this summer. You look at a guy like Cam Ward, went from Washington State. Now he's in Miami. The people in Coral Gables are ex happy, excited about his presence. You look at a guy like Dylan Gabriel, Oklahoma to Oregon. Now they're like one of the top teams in the country, and they're expected to win it all. And then you go to guys like DJ Ungalale from Florida State. 
One of the reasons we're here today is because he's at Florida State now. Because of what happened a year ago, these guys have turned the page, Coach. They're excited about DJU and what he brings. So I'm really curious to see the impact some of these teams are going to have with these new quarterbacks. Well, I think the quarterbacks are the key for any team. I think it all starts with that. But I think what you're going to see in college football, because of the portal, because of the changes, because of the evolution of the portal and how you can get players out of the portal with agents, yeah. you know, sort of placing players and all that for their benefit so that they can enhance their career, but also that they can help their team be more successful. I think you're going to see less like deviation from the top. You're going yeah. to see more good teams. You're going to see more depth in every conference, which is going to make it more interesting for the fans. And you talk about quarterbacks transfer, and don't forget about Will Howard, obviously. He has a massive role for that Ohio State Buckeye team. And then Caleb Downs, who obviously we've seen on your team, he also goes to this Ohio State Buckeye team. But there's some fans here uh, that do the, oh, oh, <laughs> oh. Yeah, and last year we all heard how... There's a few of them here. Yeah, there's 30,000 allegedly traveled, and we are very appreciative of that. 12-team playoff, though, you would think that the situation that took place at the end of last year maybe doesn't happen at the end of this year, especially for teams like Florida State and some of the big conferences. But this year, I think it's going to be bigger. I think it's going to be better than ever. I think the marquee matchups, the primetime games are going to be bigger than we've ever seen. There's going to be new rivalries made. There's going to be new eyeballs. There's going to be new stars. There's going to be another GOAT coach that's going to have to be created because this man is going to be sitting next to us all year. This is the greatest college football season yet, and it hasn't even started yet. I think that's the beautiful thing about it all. I think the big thing is it's creates more hope for more teams yeah you know we've always had six or eight teams at the end of the season and have a chance to get in the playoffs now you're going to have 25 or 30 but you're going to have the same issues with who gets left out right. at 13 no. and 14 it's, it's going to be a big time deal yeah. as to who gets left out at 13, 14. Yeah. it is well, a basketball yeah. it's yeah. always yeah. going to be that yeah. no we don't, we don't have to worry about that you guys are going to tell them who's going to get left yeah out. <laughs> the right right tell you <laughs> <laughs> We're going to make predictions for every conference. Which 12 teams I got are going to get a to A great piece on the Georgia Tech punter in on DJ Uyango Vule. We'll visit with Mike Norvell and Brent Keith. So much coming up on this week zero edition of College Game Day. Now there's expansion. You've got 18 teams in the Big Ten. You've got 16 in the SEC. Is bigger really better? We'll tell you everything you need to know the storyline to these conferences. <laughs> Also, that 12-team field. Now, maybe you're not going to have those winner-take-all games in the regular season, but you're going to have more significant ones down the line. We'll examine all of that. And Jen Latta, the story of the punting pride of Ireland. This is one of the more remarkable stories as the Yellow Jackets punter is having a home game here in Ireland this afternoon. I think it's just you two playing as well. They're from, they're oh, yeah. from here too. Yeah. yeah. Irish. Lotta. Irish lads sing that song. <laughs> and Seamus. Yes, Pickerly. Bella! Is it? The truth about DIY is you never really do it all by yourself. Because this setup took two videos and a quick demo. You can change your color here. And all of this started here, detoured here and ended down here. And this pizza wasn't delivery. This was. I wonder if they have. They do have it. We do. So whenever you start a project. Don't worry. You're not alone. We can do this together. So what are you working on? On season seven of Fansville by Dr. Pepper, the new era of college football has arrived. What's it mean, Sheriff? A 12-team playoff. It's here. And it's getting stranger than ever. Someone's stealing our side. Dad, is it true that I was born a tech fan? No! The landscape is shifting. I hate my new conference. The cast is growing. I'm a new character. And the game is changing. They didn't put Dr. Pepper in this game? So unrealistic. We waited 11 years for nothing! College football, it's a Pepper thing. Getting a fresh deal at Subway has never been easier. Just buy any footlong in the app, get another free. The only hard part is telling Travis he doesn't get to suck him footlong. Wait, seriously? I got you next time, buddy. Order now in the Subway app. Oh, sorry. No worries. Oopsies. You go. No, no, you go. Oh. <laughs>
Go for the handful. Tamara, Izzy, and Emma. No one puts more love into logistics than these three. You need them. They need a retirement plan. Work with principals so we can help you with a plan that's right for your team. Let our expertise round out yours. A promise is a trust not to be broken. Whether spoken with an oath or sealed with a pinky. And after 100 years, we're still taking care of the military community and their families. That's our mission, always. Heather likes things smooth, so she came to Roe to start losing weight with GLP-1s. Now she's on her way to losing 20% of her weight in a year with diet and exercise. Now that's smooth. We got you, Heather. Connect with a provider at roe.co slash TV. In 16 years, Greg Gerstner will land the perfect cannonball with friends he's already meeting now at AARP Volunteer and Community Events to help make sure his happiness lives as long as he does. The younger you are, the more you need AARP. Is this really happening? He's not going to pick her. No. Reese's Pieces and Cookie Dough together in a DQ blizzard. I wonder if they're still together. No. Spoiler alert, the Reese's Pieces Cookie Dough Blizzard is like really good. DQ, happy tastes good. There's nothing chill about a hot, sweaty line. Unless... You add mountain cold refreshment. Coors Light, choose chill. This is the SEC. Every walk is a parade. Every song, a symphony. Every Saturday is a celebration. Every game, a spectacle. The SEC takes us into the wild and always feels like home. This is the SEC on ABC, and this is how it's done. College Game Day is built by The Home Depot. How doers get more done, and in part by Aer Lingus. These teams traveling right at 4,000 miles from Tallahassee and Atlanta to make it to Dublin. Georgia Tech had practice on Thursday in a hell of a hell of a hell of a pep rally, as they called it, at Marion Square on Friday afternoon. The ACC didn't lose anybody in realignment. Three new teams, so the conference name's now a misnomer. Not just Atlantic Coast, also Pacific Coast and SMU right in the middle. How about that Miami Cal trip? That's going to be nearly 2,600 miles on October 5th. Head coaching changes. There are three new head coaches in the ACC as Boston College, Duke, and Syracuse have changed to Bill O'Brien. Manny Diaz back in the league and Fran Brown, the former Georgia assistant, taking over. In the preseason top 25, Florida State is the only team in the top 10, but four are ranked in the preseason top 25 with Miami, a team that some like to win, get there. And Georgia Tech, a Team on the rise, and Haynes King among ACC quarterbacks returning to their team had the best QBR, but with Cam Ward, DJ Uyangalule coming in, that skewed that number a little bit. But do you know among power conference quarterbacks last year, the only guy to account for more touchdowns than Haynes King was Jaden Daniels. He won the Heisman Trophy. So King brings a little bit of a swagger to the Georgia Tech offense. As you've looked at the ACC in the preseason, how, how do you break this down to start? Well, I actually see three teams that, at least on paper, Florida State, Clemson, and Miami, probably have a little more talent from top to bottom. Uh, they all have somebody at the quarterback position who can execute and play, whether they're transfers or whether they were there and played last year. I think each one of them have a little bit of a challenge. You know, Clemson didn't play in critical times in the games and lost some close games last year. You know, Florida State, uh, I got a thousand. I just want Kirk to know I got a thousand phone calls when we got in the playoffs. He didn't have anything to do with them not getting in the playoffs, and I didn't either. But we, we, we both got hammered. Uh, you know, but yeah, some of us did get hammered in it. Yes, <laughs> yeah, anyway, did. I'm glad we got in, and they probably should have got in too, but at least we won't have that situation this year. But I do think there's some other teams in the ACC, whether it's NC State, Georgia Tech. I yeah. think Georgia Tech presents some tremendous challenges with the way they play offense. If they can play a little better defense, they're going to be right in it. So, you know, Louisville was in it last year. So I think this is going to be a deeper conference than it has been in the past. I concur with everything you just said there, Coach. And you didn't 
deserve to get those phone calls. Now, there is a school that you beat that probably thought they should have gotten to playoffs too. They are the reigning national champions, only lost one game, but the Florida State people took up for everybody on who shouldn't get in, who shouldn't get out. Um, the All Coast Conference now is very fascinating because I think they're the only conference where the new schools that are coming in aren't the ones that are favored to win. You think about the Big Ten, you've got Oregon coming in there. SEC, Texas is supposed to come in here. For the ACC, it's the old faithful. And you mentioned Florida State, Clemson, NC State's ranked in the top 25. Shout out to Doran and them. Look out for Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech returns 20 starters, okay? 20 starters. Five offense alignment all return. Yep. Quarterback, drones, run option guy. Right. They're able to move the rock. And if you get into Blacksburg in a big game, that's a tough place to play. I think the ACC is going to show up this year in a massive way. I agree with you. And I like what you said, Coach, because I like Miami. I think that they have a good shot this year because of Cam Ward. I went to go watch them practice last week. And I spoke to some players. They said the biggest difference between now and a year ago is that Cam Ward, he influences everybody, not just the offense, the defense, too, with his energy and his juice. They got some transfers that they brought in. Mish Powell, he's a safety. Mish played for Washington in the national championship game. This kid is a former walk-on. That means he's wired differently because he had to actually prove he was worth the scholarship. They love his leadership. They're comfortable in the front, front seven. But that back end, they need to get that end tightened a little bit. They think Mish Powell will help their secondary. Who do you, who do you it, look at as a sleeper? I, well, me, I, first, I want to tell you that at the top here. I, I think that Florida State, what's interesting to me, is Florida State loses a four-year starting quarterback on Jordan Travis, who really changed the complexion of the entire Absolutely. program with yeah. Mike Norvell. Yep. They lose Vince in the back. They lose the top three receivers. And they, they're the favorite to win the ACC. Yeah. I think it tells you everything about Mike Norvell and the job he's doing about reloading yeah. at this point at Tallahassee. Clemson, to me, is a team you better look out for. Everybody's making fun of Dabo. Everybody's talking about he's not doing the portal. Everybody's talking about how he's being left behind. His defense will be good and keep him in every game they play. His quarterback now has a lot of experience. They got skill and they're better at receiver. Clemson, I think, is a very dangerous team. The sleeper yes. in the ACC to me, a lot of people here don't even know they're in the ACC, SMU. Rhett, Rhett Lashley, yeah. Rhett Lashley yeah. and this offense, Preston Stone, the quarterback. If you didn't know they're in the ACC, you better pay attention because they will be, they'll outscore people in this I, conference. I, 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 you know what? Yeah. Against Steven here, the one thing, they're going to have to play better. They play power better defense, but better one offense in, one, one because they played power conference teams yeah. last year and averaged 14 points a game. Yeah. Yeah. They couldn't yeah. score yeah. against yeah. teams. So like like 20, be playing 20 guys back in a quarterback, I think, gives them a shot. Yeah, we'll see. Well. Stone's healthy. Uh, what, who do you like to sleep? You like, nobody's saying NC State. They've got great. I was just going to bring up NC State. State loves, loves it. Yeah, they, they love this. Yeah. But going back to Coach's point about the three teams in their own tier, I agree with that. The best thing about that with Miami, Florida State, uh, and Clemson, they're going to get tested early. Yeah. Miami's going to Florida. Clemson's got Georgia. And Florida State's got to come here yeah. to play a conference game. We're going to know a lot about those teams right off the jump. And that's what sets up for a great I situation. Love that. I love that. My, exactly. my sleeper, though, is Georgia Tech. I, I really do believe. I like that. that. They were in the top three offensively last year yep. in the ACC. Yeah. They were not very good on defense. They've got a new defensive coordinator. They got some players out of the portal. If they can play defense a little bit better, they give people tremendous headaches yeah. with their offense, yeah. their yeah. running well, quarterback, yeah. and the offense. Haynes King got to tur not turn the ball over, as you know. Oh, 16 that, interceptions that, last year. Yeah. But let's just say for ACC fans, last year people talked about, oh, the ACC, it's not much depth. Listen to what we just did. Florida State, yep. Clemson, what? North Carolina, what? Virginia Tech, Miami, Who SMU coming in there, North Carolina State. <laughs> right. I'm just saying, like, yeah. it, it, it sounds right. like a lot more depth this year yeah. as far as teams that can be competitive, which is only going to help you when it comes to look what we did when it comes to who we beat. Yep. You know, a, another team that no one has mentioned so far is North Carolina. North Carolina squandered an opportunity last year with a, a legendary quarterback for North Carolina, and Drake May. So now here they come. But, man, as Pete Thamel joins us, Pete's schedule sets up pretty well for Carolina. They open on the road at Minnesota. And after that, do you know they don't travel more than 10 oh. miles from campus until the last Saturday in October? I mean, Max is going to be at home all the time now. 
Are you Who's going to play a quarterback? Are you going to give us a poor old Carolina, Reese? Uh, I am not. <laughs> Mac told I'm me not. this week to not be surprised on Thursday on their big opener in Minneapolis if both Max Johnson and redshirt sophomore Connor Harrell don't play. Max Johnson is obviously the redshirt senior. He started at LSU. He transferred to Texas A&M. And he has 22 career starts. I call him the expected starter for Carolina on Thursday night. But Connor Harrell gives them a different element. Brown told me he has 4-4 four, four speed. It could come in as a change of pace type player. The most important part for Brown Reese is Minnesota's had to prepare for both of them and they're drastically different players. One last note from here on our game today, Hakeem Williams, sophomore receiver at Florida State, will not play in this game. He's a potential starter for the Seminoles this year. He's got a minor injury. He'll be back soon, but we will not see him on the field at Aviva today. All right, Pete, hear more from you as college game day unfolds the rest of the day. And Kirk's Ponies open today <laughs> on Chris Alt Field, named for the legendary coach of the Wolfpack and a selection committee member this year. Nevada and SMU, SMU's first game as a member of the ACC. Any problem? Uh, first pick of the year here. We're going early here. Quick the I'm, I'm, going, uh, yeah. I'm going SMU. I think, the, I think Preston Stone and the offense that they have around them, too much, too much for Nevada. Coach, what do you got? Uh, SMU, abs you know, they got too many players back with the quarterback. They've had a lot of success. They know how to win. Nevada's a kind of an upstart program, so I'm SMU all the way. Love Lashley. Love the city of Dallas. Give me SMU. And I think, to Kirk's point, they're going to be good this year. I, I think SMU in the ACC is big news for their program as a whole. I like SMU getting a big-time win and covering 27. Yeah, yeah, I agree with Kirk. I think they'll be competitive in the ACC. I don't think they'll win it, but I think they'll win today. They'll beat Nevada. Preston Stone's a great quarterback. Uh, I didn't the, say they'd win the ACC. <laughs> I said they'd be competitive in the Nevada. Now you said that the SMU no. Mustangs are going to dump all over the Florida State Seminoles. That's what Kirk Herbst said. <laughs> Uh, that's what Kirk hey. said. <laughs> and so on week zero, we have our first personal foul yeah. targeting yeah. Pat that McAfee. Might be, yeah. That might be targeting. Yeah. Help, help me. Just throw it on there. It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have to be facts. Some, some lesson you can learn around here is you never know where it's going to lead when you stroll into a good pub, right? Take Matt Finsky and Caleb McNulty from Sarasota. They met in a bar in Tallahassee after a Florida State Clemson game. A couple of Seminole alums with Irish heritage. And they were married Thursday in Castle in County Kildare. It's just about an hour west of here. And the blissful bride and groom are now with Jess Sims as we welcome in Jess. Hello, guys. Good morning. Yes, I am here with a diehard FSU alumni. We got Matt. We got Kayla, a.k.a. the newlyweds. Y'all got married just two days ago, just outside of Dublin. Was that always the plan, or how did this all come together? So Matt and I met almost six years ago at a bar in Tallahassee. We have been FSU fans ever since we've been there. All of our siblings went to FSU. So as soon as the word got out that FSU was playing in Ireland, there was no other decision that we were able to make. We were getting married here. We brought 125 of our closest friends and family. We got married at a castle. And here we are two days later. Go Knowles. <laughs> and we knew the Irish knew how to throw a party. Okay. That wedding was 12 hours long. Tw okay, well, but clearly the party hasn't stopped because you have more than 30 of your family members right here. What would a Knowles win mean for them, for you? I mean, dare I say for your marriage? Well, you're right. The party is just getting started here. And again, the Irish know how to throw a good party. So we'll be hitting the pubs a little bit later before the game. A Knowles win would mean everything, and it would really just ingrain everything we we love about FSU and love about our Irish heritage. It's just been epic the whole weekend. And again, we're just getting started here, baby. We're just getting started. Also, y'all, they have a golden retriever named Clyde after the Clyde and Costello's bar right outside of FSU. Don't go anywhere. We got so much more coming up on College Game Day. Here in Dublin, they know a little bit about the luck of the Irish, but what about the fighting Irish? Where does Notre Dame stand without a conference, but with their new star QB and Riley Leonard? Plus, we'll hear from another transfer quarterback, FSU meet DJU. We're going to talk about how QB EJ Manuel sat down with him to see what he's trying to prove. Let's go to our next segment, Fairest Calls, inspired by Geico's fair and fast 24-7 claim series. Do we have to do the Geico stuff on him here? Yep, we do. Let's play the clip. Holding, number 53, 10-yard penalty. This literally happens every game. Can we just skip to the action? Nope, nothing but fair and fast claims, just like Geico. 
Here's the next clip. But I don't want to play the clip. Pass interference, number 34. Wow. Doesn't get any fairer than this, boys. For savings and service, get more with GEICO. To get to this hot, melty goodness, our pizzas have to go through this. Topping distribution, horrible. That's fair. Terrible. Pathetic. It's a definite. Yes. Introducing Domino's Quality Captains, how perfect pizza gets made. The Bush Guide, cold and smooth survival skills. Hello? Should you become stranded, be ready to signal rescuers. Bush. <gasps> how long have I been? 12 minutes. Head for the mountains. Your Wyndham is waiting. Because after crushing yesterday's meeting, you deserve a little me time. With 24 trusted brands by Wyndham to choose from, your Wyndham is waiting. Get the lowest price at WyndhamHotels.com. At Papa John's, get an extra large New York style one topping pizza for only $10.99. It's a mouth watering, stretched thinner, made bigger, more for your money, extra large New York style one topping pizza for only $10.99. Better get you some Papa John's. <laughs> Another group project. It's due tomorrow. I hope I can get online tonight. I really need this to pass. Truth is, I can't do this on my own. Connect every student, change every future. Connecting changes everything. If there's a chance for what you hope for and you dream for and plan for how can you stand for Sorry, honey, it's a work thing. Mine's also a work thing. I just need someone to cover my shift. So is mine. Alan says your business vehicle is now covered with Progressive. Protected 24-7, just like your home and auto. Oh, that's great. So dinner time's just phone time now? Sorry. You know, I heard that ground turkey is the healthiest poultry. You know what, never mind. Just be on your phone. Oh, that's Thank so you. Much. Likelihood to win, 2%. Yeah, you think? Relax, Bob. She's not talking about our match. Those are AI-generated insights about the US Open from IBM Watson X. So you're saying I still have a chance? Slim and none. Who's got next? When you drive north out of Dublin, you slip in and out of time. Dipping in between an ancient history embroiled and intertwined with a modern history still yearning to find its own footing. Beautiful coastal towns and fishing villages. Bogs and burns and bloodlines. As you reach the city of Dundalk, you realize how close you are to a fault line, a historical fault line, where once high tension border crossings have been replaced with open road and freedom. Bill Clinton spoke here of peace in front of 60,000 people just miles from the Northern Ireland border. That peace still stands. And what a benefit of that peace with Tourism Ireland. You can discover Belfast or the vibrant heart of Northern Ireland, dynamic city, cradled by River Loggan. Enjoy a rich tapestry of history and culture, great architecture, and there's a renowned Titanic Museum where the story of the Titanic unfolds in a remarkable way and highly recommended by a number of people during our time here. Not a coincidence where you go from the Titanic to, or it is a coincidence rather, go from the Titanic to Florida State's bus, which is headed to Stadium Aviva. The Seminoles looking forward to a great season two hours and 31 minutes away from kicking it off against georgia tech now this has become a bit of a staple over the last uh, 30 years plus 1988 the emerald isle classic look at the unis on lansdowne road that's where the new avivia stadium is now bc was two and seven army was eight and one 
Ed Toner scored three times on the day, and Boston College came in in front of the Dublin crowd experiencing American college football for the first time and won it. 1996 Notre Dame and Navy. Oh, look, at, look at my man. Our great friend Lou Holtz. You know Lou Holtz had benched Audrey Denson the week Audrey before Denson. saying, hey, we can't, we, he's not the best option. Well, all he did is run loose for 33 and touch that down Irish Ron Palace, Mark Edwards? That was Mark Edwards. Going yeah, Ron the Palace, there. the quarterback there. They won, that was Lou's last year at Notre Dame, 2014. Penn State, George O'Leary, James, young James Franklin. Here. James Franklin's first game. I got nothing for you there. I, I, I Justin Holman came off the bench. Okay. Per, put him ahead. Hackenberg, Christian Hackenberg. Hackenberg. He, Get in there, big fella. Get in there. He threw for 454 yards, but that was the biggest play with the one to convert fourth down. And Sam Ficken. You just never know. <laughs> never know. What do you think about the kick from Ficken? Anytime Ficken's wow. kicking, you know it's going to be good. <laughs> and then last year, Notre Dame and Navy the were here. here in this game. Sam Hartman made his debut, and the Irish uh, took care of the mids pretty easily. Hartman, 251, four touchdowns on the day, and expectations were through the roof for the Fighting Irish. There was a little bit of a fit and start last year as Hartman also was up and down. So now Marcus Freeman has turned to the portal, reached into the ACC again. Got a quarterback in Riley Leonard from Duke who can run it as well as spin it. College game day will be in College Station next week. Texas A&M opener, that'll be a tough way to start. They've got these same Seminoles in November and wrapping up with USC. Now, if they can get past that opener, though, yeah. we're really going run. to be talking about yeah. playoff contention. For them. No, no doubt about that. I had a conversation with Coach Freeman, and the first question was about Riley Leonard. You know, what does he bring to the offense? He said he brings a lot of confidence, doesn't he? He's played in really big games, and we got him a weapon. Make sure you guys keep an, keep an eye out for this receiver, Chris Wells. He's a receiver from, I mean, Chris Mitchell, FIU receiver, averaged 17 yards per catch. He led Conference USA with 93 yards per game. This guy had a double move in the spring game and caught a touchdown. He's going to be that weapon that they haven't had on offense in a long time. I think Riley Leonard is going to be looking for him often. Yeah, I'm excited to see what Freeman does with this brand new team, seemingly after the Sam Hartman experience last year, which started out so high and then kind of fizzled out with the new college football playoff structure. Obviously, Notre Dame is in the position that they're in. But if you remember what Riley did whenever he was down at Duke, he brought that place all the way back. We took game day to Duke down there. Can run very, very, very well. Excited to see with the offense. You lose Audric Estime, who was the running back. It was like a 45-year-old man that they fed the ball to a lot. I'm excited to see how they change, how they adapt. But I think you're going to see Riley on the ground. Old school Notre yeah. Dame football coming this year. Here's the thing that sticks out to me. Marcus Freeman in his third year. Culture has been established. Coming off a 10-3 and three year. Defensive coordinator Al Gold knows football. Veteran defense. They only gave up 16 points a game last year, right? So the big question, they got Jadarian Price, you got Jermichael Love, they can run the football, you got big linemen. It goes back to what Dez just talked about. Riley Leonard, we know he can create, but do they have the speed on the skill? This has been an issue there for a long time. Can they run, not just with their schedule, but if they're daring the dream and beat the big boys, they need more than one guy. Yeah. They've got to step up and give Riley Leonard some weapons to make a difference. I think it starts with Jeremiah Love as a really good running back, yeah. and he's a very versatile guy that they can throw the ball to. But I think you're right. They're going to – Riley Leonard can run. He can run the option. He can throw RPOs. But the number one thing is, is can they make explosive plays down the field? They're going to play good defense. They'll be good on special teams. They'll be well coached. But I disagree with what everybody thinks, that because they're not in a conference – that they can't be in the top four. But they're not going to have to play in a conference championship game either, so they're going to have a bye week before the playoffs. And I think this team will get so a you're saying, you're they saying get a bye. Yeah. You think that they technically get a bye by not playing a conference championship. So people that are upset that if they go 12-0, and 0, they don't get in the top four regardless. Right. You but know, they get a bye because they're not playing in the championship game. Okay. They yeah, don't right. have a conference championship game to play. You yeah, love we, Notre Dame too, right? That is uh, one of your favorite places, Notre Dame. Well, I mean, you know, I like Notre Dame. <laughs> <laughs> you obviously don't. <laughs> if we'll that see, looked long me, hey, yeah, yeah, if that look me as anything, you obviously don't. <laughs> no, 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 Notre Dame was good to you last year. They were, great to me. they were unbelievable. Great to me, yeah. My name's Patrick McAfee, Potty McAfee. Obviously, Notre Dame's going to be good to me. 
I just, I'm excited <laughs> to hear Coach Saban's thoughts on Notre Dame next year. We'll see next week. <laughs> kind of next week. Hey, we're yeah. on the whole next show. Yeah, whole week. Also, Chris Notre Mitchell. Dame has Mike yeah. Denbrock back as the offensive coordinator. He's been at Notre Dame in the past in his career. Yeah. He was with Brian Kelly at LSU a year ago, so he's back there working with Marcus Freeman. Uh, Steve, what do you got on the Irish? I just look at Notre Dame. Coach pointed out the path is there for them. I just think it's a different Notre Dame team this year. They lost two pro tackles. They've always been able to rely on their offensive line. And then you talk about going on the road in a hostile environment. You got a new quarterback, new offensive line, new offensive coordinator. That's a tough place to hash those things out in your first game. So that's what we'll be watching next week. But yeah. the path is there for them for the playoff, no yeah. doubt. The guy was supposed to replace Joe Walt got injured yeah. too, so they've had further shuffling in the offensive line as well. They're going to have a true freshman playing left tackle mm -hmm. because of injury, which will be interesting. I'm sure the guys are going to next guy. Yeah. But yeah. They're going to have yeah. to lean on that defense to the offense catches up. Did, did, did the fridge not make it through customs? Yeah, what happened? What, what happened? Nobody's uh, taking this serious because you yeah. don't have that fridge. No fridge. I'm, huh? I'm bummed out no about fridge, it. no mic. We got nothing yeah. over there. <laughs> Step in the right direction. Moving on from the fridge. Oh, the, the, we're moving on? Yeah. It's not going at all? No, it's gone. It, it's not going to be in College Station next no. week? No. Oh. New what? New technology. I, I'm sitting out here acting like I didn't know this. <laughs> Notre Dame, Texas a and Howdy! Don't say in College Station, 9 a.m. Eastern time. That is 8 in College Station. Before we go to Pete here, Pat. I think it's only going to be like 120 degrees or something. And you love. Can't wait to get You that. love the heat. Pete Thamel is with the commissioner of the ACC, Jim Phillips. Pete. Thanks, Reese. Jim Phillips called it a Chamber of Commerce day today here in Ireland. We've got thousands of fans, a great stage for the ACC. What opportunity does today give your league, Jim? It's, a, it's amazing, Pete, to really be the only game in America and across the, uh, really, the world, a chance for people to see ACC football. I think you're going to see two great teams today, really. An unbelievable Florida State program that uh, undefeated last year, our conference champion. We all know what happened at the end of the year. They have a great group coming back. And you got an upstart Georgia Tech team in Brent Key's second year. So yeah. great kids, both programs, terrific, uh, two terrific coaches. But I will say this, I'm really looking forward to the year overall. And I think that this, what, this game allows us to do that. We're coming off a year where we had 11 bowl wow. uh, teams out of 14, most of anybody in the conference. Um, we really performed well last year in the non-conference. But when you look at the season, Pete, I think there's three things that are going to be really good about ACC football. One is we've really challenged ourselves mm -hmm. as it relates to non-conference scheduling. 27 games against Power 4 opponents, including Notre Dame. Uh, that really will set the tone. Last year, we went 11-9 and nine against SEC and the Big Ten. So we will, again, challenge ourselves there. The second piece of this is, this is a conference of quarterbacks. We have 13 quarterbacks that come into the season with over 3,500 yards passing wow. and over 20 touchdowns. You're going to see two of them today with sure. Haynes and DJ. And then finally, when I look at the conference in general, tremendous coaches sure. and tremendous players. Six coaches on the Bobby Dodd preseason watch list, most of any conference. And in the country, there's three head coaches that have won national championships. We have two of them, Dabble Sweeney at Clemson, and Mac Brown at North Carolina. And then finally, great, great players, great players. Sure. The leading returning passer in the country in yardage, Cam Ward at mm -hmm. Miami. The leading receiver in yards, um, Colin Lacey at Louisville. Mm -hmm. And the second leading rusher in yards in O'Marion Hampton from, uh, from North Carolina. So a really exciting year of ACC football ahead, and we're going to kick it off here today in Ireland. Awesome. And, and Jim, there's some challenges off the field, obviously, Florida State and Clemson. There's an ongoing legal battle. Can you walk us through what the next few months are going to look like? Absolutely. It's time to play football. I, I've, been, <laughs> I've been very direct about my thoughts about we are going to fight um, these legal cases, but we are going to put those to the side. What's nice about what's coming up, Pete, is we're going to put the focus back where it should be, All on right. our student athletes and our coaches. And we'll put the focus back up here to Reese, Jim. Thank you so Sounds much. Good. Pete, Jim, thank you very much. Jim Phillips, always a gentleman, always welcoming whenever we're in ACC territory. This is our first international trip with College Game Day, 32nd season on the road for the show, and it really seems a little bit different without our friend Chad Hanna. He's an EBS operator in the truck. He's been with the show throughout its entirety uh, when it's been on the road for these 32 years. It was discovered this summer that Chad is battling a brain tumor. He's in the hands of great doctors, great support from his family. We want Chad and his entire family to know 
you have our support and our love too. We want you to beat this and can't wait to see you back out on the road with us. All the best to you, Chad. We love you, brother. So we'll look forward to seeing you soon. Godspeed, brother. Absolutely. See you, Chad, buddy. Absolutely. Absolutely. Chad's a wonderful guy. He's been a great part of this family for a long time. Still to come on week zero edition of College Game Day, Mike Norvell, the head coach of the Seminoles, will join us live. His team is walking in to Aviva Stadium and some traditional Irish games, some Gaelic games. Some of our guys tried their hands at. <laughs> a promise is a trust not to be broken. Whether spoken with an oath. Do solemnly swear. It's your first day. You know I got your back, right? Or seal with a pinky. In 1922, a group of soldiers launched USAA with a promise to take care of their own. And after 100 years, we're still taking care of the military community and their families. That's our mission, always. What's up at DQ? Oh, just the best deal ever. The $7 bacon cheeseburger meal deal. Bacon cheeseburger fries, drink, and a sundae. <laughs> no time to be modest. It's all full size for just seven bucks. Right now at DQ. Happy tastes good. Being the best takes hard work. It takes early mornings, planning, precision, sweat, sacrifice, and teamwork. That's why Old Dominion Freight Line, the number one national LTL carrier for quality, works hard to be the best in the game and is proud to support those striving to be the best in their game. Old Dominion Freight Line, helping the world keep promises. She's got an NFL offer. Don't play with me. Then I'm going to take it. Aren't you a little too old to be playing football? Wait, what? They want somebody that can run a 40, not somebody that is 40. When the coach calls your number, you're going to say, G56, bingo. How you going to celebrate a win? You going to give everybody butterscotch candy? <laughs> Probably out your pocket with no wrappers on it. Just going to give them raw candy. That's nasty, by the way. With DraftKings, new customers bet 5 bucks to get 200 instantly in bonus bets and a month of NFL Plus Premium. The crown is yours. Getting a fresh deal at Subway has never been easier. Just buy any footlong in the app, get another free. The only hard part is telling Travis he doesn't get the second footlong. Wait, seriously? I got you next time, buddy. Order now in the Subway app. Your record label is taking off, but so is your sound engineer. You need to hire. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. Indeed Instant Match instantly delivers quality candidates matching your job description. Visit indeed.com slash hire. Mando was created by a doctor. She came up with the perfect formula for whole body odor control. Mando doesn't just block odor all day. It controls odor for 72 hours. With cologne quality scents. Make it never smelled so good. The FedEx Cup playoffs on ESPN+. Plus. The playoffs. It's crunch time. The best in the world. The FedEx Cup playoffs on ESPN+. Plus. Look at that jet stream. Weather. Oh boy. Yep, they're calling it an atmospheric river. It is coming down. Oh, flood warning Louisiana. Are they obsessed? Oh yeah. The stuff they do on the green screen, unbelievable. They said 10% chance of rain. Seems more like 40% to me. Nope. It has nothing to do with the dew point. That's Progressive can't save you from becoming your parents, but we can save you money when you bundle home an auto with us. What are those, cumulus clouds? Likelihood to win, 2%. Yeah, you think? Relax, Bob. She's not talking about our match. Those are AI-generated insights about the US Open from IBM Watson X. So you're saying I still have a chance? Slim and none. Who's got next? College Game Day, built by The Home Depot, is brought to you by Duncan. There is no play of the day like kicking your day off with coffee and breakfast at Duncan. This is the Waterford Trophy. The winning team will take this home. They took six pieces of crystal. Took them about 70 hours to put these things together. And Ooh. there's the helmet. Ooh, there's huh? GT on one side. And then look what's on the other side, Coach. I think you should put that on. Boom! <laughs> Florida State on the other side. Yeah, yeah, throw that on there. I don't know if anybody's head's going to fit in that. that I mean, that's, I that's, that's the Coach's Award helmet. Careful, careful, Easy. careful. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Take 
so much. Too big of a brain. Too big of a brain. Too big of a brain. That's beautiful and heavy. The coach gassed him up. Yeah. Well, that like that will be the coach's award trophy. Now, the Seminoles are embracing the spirit, trying their feet and a little traditional Irish dancing. In fact, Florida State, they don't play again until a week from Monday, so they're going to stay around, do a little sightseeing tomorrow after their game against Georgia Tech, and we're glad to be joined by the head coach at Florida State, Mike Norvell, and you see the caption on the TikTok. They got them Florida boys in Ireland, and what I would love to ask Mike is to critique the dance step, the Irish dance step of his players, but given the fact that they're in serious football game mode right now, Mike, what benefit does your program get from playing a game like this here in Dublin? Well, I mean, there's no, no greater stage than to kick off the college football season. Uh, you know, being able to do it here is just uh, such, a, such a wonderful uh, venture. Um, I mean, it's uh, so much excitement. I mean, you could feel the, uh, uh, the excitement throughout the community. I mean, our fan base, I mean, just un unbelievable uh, support. So much garnet and gold here in the streets of Dublin. Uh, just so, so excited to, uh, to get the season started. Your fans are here in a big way at the game day set. I assume they're going to turn up in that stadium as well. How do you feel about your team having to make this long trip over here? What has your messaging been to eliminate distractions, play football, and how do you think your guys are going to handle it? Well, I mean, there's been so much preparation since January, getting ready to, to for today. And, uh, you know, yes, this game, I mean, there's a lot of travel, a lot of things we've had to work through. Uh, but I think our guys have handled it extremely well. I mean, our operations staff has done a remarkable job uh, to keep it as seamless for our players. And, uh, you know, you, you feel the energy. I mean, this has been an incredible hospitality here in Dublin. Uh, all the game managers, you know, this is a, a kicking off ACC conference play against a very talented Georgia Tech team. I mean, it's all focused on going to be the best we've been. And, uh, you know, our our guys are prepared at a high level, and we're ready to go play. You know, Mike, us coaches always have something that we feel is a real challenge for us, you know, going into the season. What do you feel like your biggest challenge is with this team going into this season? Well, you know, some of it's just the unknown. Uh, we have guys that are in new roles, new opportunities. I mean, I love the experience that we have. I mean, I love the, the talent, the size, the speed, the athletic ability uh, that our guys possess. But now it comes down to the moment of truth. When game day starts, are we going to be able to rely on that discipline, the details, all of the training, everything we've done up to this point, and to go put it on display? But I've got a lot of confidence in this team. They worked at a really hard level, at a really high level. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited to watch them play today. Coach, you guys worked at a high level uh, last season, but it didn't end the way you wanted it to or, or any of the Seminoles fans. How have you grown personally from what happened a year ago, from that experience? Well, you know, obviously, I mean, this is this is a new year. It's a new opportunity. Uh, you know, obviously, you grow from every experience. Every experience you're willing to go through, you're willing to pour your heart into it. You're willing to work through the highs and the lows. I mean, it gets an opportunity to showcase your identity, who, what's at the core of you. And since January, since we've gotten back, I mean, our team has, has truly just embraced the work. Everything we've thrown at them, all things that uh, we've tried to, to, to put in front of them, you know, they've get a, just kept such a wonderful mindset. You know, they've made the investments. Uh, they've come together. You know, as a, as a wonderful team and brotherhood, uh, you know, since that point, and you know, this is this is what you do it for. You do it for to, to be on a stage like this today to kick off the college football season, and you know, for the world to get a glimpse at what this uh, Seminole football team is going to be. Coach, if you could talk about the program in general, the first two years you were kind of building your culture. Now here we are talking about you guys still having an amazing team and a potential of 2024. You lose a four-year starting quarterback. You lose Benson, of course, the running back. You lose the great two great uh, receivers. And here you are reloading. Talk about the difference in where this program is at year five for you from where it was when you first started. Well, I mean, this is a program that's built for playmakers and, you know, offense, defense, special teams. Uh, you know, I'm fortunate to get to, to who I get to coach and, and all the work that they put in. And, you know, as you had, you know, great players that have moved on. We had 10 guys drafted in the NFL, really proud of that, uh, you know, proud of the team and, and the things that we've been able to do. But, you know, now it's about this team and guys that, you know, have been, you know, good players for us that now get to be the stars of, of today. And, I mean, this is this is where you see the growth, the maturity. Uh, we have so many guys that have been here for four and five years that have been a 
part of the process, been a part of the journey. We've been able to complement that with, with newcomers and guys that have come in that have really bought in uh, to this Florida State, uh, you know, the, the standard and the way that we operate. And so seeing all that come together, you know, that's that's what it, that's what it's about in today's age of, of college football, still putting together the best team. And, you know, we got a lot of great players uh, that have been a part of it. we got a lot of great players here today. But, uh, you know, it's all about the team and how they're able to go out there and play together. Yeah. Hey, Coach, we, we see you run sprints a lot in practice. What's your record? What would you guesstimate your record to be when it comes to your sprint game against the players? I, I used to win a lot more of them a few years back, but I think we've uh, just continued to get faster on that defensive line. So <laughs> haven't, haven't, been, haven't, haven't been winning a whole lot of them here lately, but I'm not complaining about that. Hey, you look good. You look great, man. Good luck today. Mike, thank you for All being right, with us. Mike Novell, the head coach of the Seminoles. They'll stick around. They'll do a little sightseeing tomorrow. It'll be a much more pleasant trip should the Seminoles prevail against Georgia Tech. And look at this. Some traditional oh. Irish fare coming in from oh, Fire and Soul. Jess, what do we have here? Okay. Yes, Marie, yes, so yes. I mean, you say traditional. Nothing says traditional quite oh, like yeah. I'm bringing it as right to you because you're the only one that's going to eat it. Yep, okay. Tripe and okay. onions. Tripe, tripe and uh, tripe. tripe and oh, you, want, tripe you don't know what that is? No, I know exactly what tripe is. I'm going to tell you after is. you take a bite. Oh, you're diving right into the potato. Wow. Stop it. Oh, oh wow. you got a big piece. Oh, Where's the tripe? Here? You know what that On is, On top of the Guinness. Like big, yeah. Wait, Pat, is that, the tripe? that is the lining of a cow's stomach. I'm just going to eat these desserts right. over here. It was delicious. Hey, let's have that this is tripe. Black pudding, <laughs> that is pork Where's blood. Where's the tripe? It's just the tripe. Yeah, oh, that's the tripe. Yeah. Oh, Here, coach, we got you. You dove right in there. Mm. Coach, yeah. yeah, I yes. mean, <laughs> how dessert. Mm. I, I mean, it's, oh, it's phenomenal. Wait, how really? yeah. this is, is cow's it really stomach. This is fantastic. I'm, I'm into the this stomach. Is, oh, I, I'm cow's I, stomach. I want to know <laughs> that I showed Pat McAfee how to eat an oyster. Oh, my God. Suck it down, Reese. Suck it down. Wow, that was gorgeous. All right, listen up. Your fire defense isn't cutting it, and it's almost game time. Hey, you need kidder alarms in every room. We're playing zone defense. I mean, fires can happen anywhere. Like here. Here, too. This. You can't handle the heat. <laughs> What fills your heart about Ireland? The coast? The people? Did you find me, Pearls? Give them to me, okay? <laughs> All right. Hi. How are you? The crack. Come on, come on, come on! <laughs> Ta-da! Three, two, one. Oh, there we go! Fill your heart with Ireland. Discover more at Ireland.com. Only KFC has nuggets worthy of a sauce. Try one of five signature flavors, drizzled, drenched, and dripping on original recipe chicken nuggets. Grab 10 for just $5.99. Big drip, big drip, big drip, big drip, big drip. Big drip. the dumbest thing you've ever wasted money on? I was paying for two Netflix accounts over like three years. That's like $1,400,000. How'd you figure that out? I saw an app that shows you all the monthly subscriptions you have and how much you're paying. So what'd you do then, just like call and cancel or? I have a phobia of making calls, so absolutely I did not do that. Uh, the app, you can cancel the app. What is the app called? Rocket Money. At Domino's, we've heard in focus groups that some people don't love our classic crust. Too doughy. It's not thin enough. So here's another pizza. Mm -hmm. All the ingredients come together. And so what if I told you this was Domino's? Just a Domino's, mm -hmm. for real. Introducing Domino's New York style pizza. Try it tonight. If you don't stain your deck, it's like the previous owner is still hanging around. <laughs> so today, let's stain with Bear, the number one rated stain, and make your deck yours. Bear, exclusively at the Home Depot.
All right, sandworms out of the basement and the furnace has been exercised. Another progressive home and auto bundle fully protected from the unexpected. Beetlejuice caused quite a ruckus, huh? Jamie, don't say his name. Beetlejuice? Saying his name three times is how you summon him. Right. What if I say other words in between? Does that restart it? Don't overthink it. Or what if I broke it up into two parts? Like someone said, what's your favorite bug? Beetle, what's your favorite morning beverage? Juice. Juice. Oh. You're welcome. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice in theater September 6th. Likelihood to win, 2%. Yeah, you think? Relax, Bob. She's not talking about our match. Those are AI-generated insights about the US Open from IBM Watson X. So you're saying I still have a chance? Slim and none. Who's got next? Temple Bar is what Bourbon Street would be like with cobblestones. The kind of place you go early to get a seat and stay all day where the back of the bar is filled with half-poured porters waiting to be topped off. A place where people from all around the world befriend the person next to them. They raise a pint and get the day started right. Sure, how can you drink all day if you don't start in the morning? Hey, man. Uh, Georgia Tech is on the bus and they are headed to Aviva Stadium. Kickoff in two hours and four minutes immediately following the Week Zero edition of College Game Day. ACC opener for both, as we mentioned, since Brent Key took over. The Yellow Jackets 4-0 against ranked ACC opponents. And what a crowd we've had this morning as we reach the top of the hour afternoon here in Dublin, morning in the States. On College Green, just steps away from Trinity College at Houses of Sacred Scrolls, copies of the Gospels from the ninth century called Book of Kells. And we are delivering the good news of a new college football season and the Heisman Trophy being in Ireland and overseas for the first time ever. We'll see who might claim the trophy most recently won by LSU's Jaden Daniels. Time now for Best in the Game, brought to you by Old Dominion Freight Line. Helping the world keep promises. And the promise right now is that Oregon quarterback, former Oklahoma quarterback, former UCF quarterback, <laughs> Dylan Gabriel is the favorite. You know, he has a chance to become the all-time leading passer in college football history by the end. Big Ten has a whole new book. You know, they have annexed the West Coast team, Washington, Oregon, USC, and UCLA, which is in L.A. That means long travel, Rutgers and USC, a nearly 2,500 mile trip in October. Five new head coaches in the Big Ten, not counting David Braun, Jerome Moore going into Michigan, Jonathan Smith, Michigan State, Sean Foster taking over at UCLA among those changes. Preseason top 25 poll at the top is dominated by B1G. Four in the top ten, six ranked with USC and Iowa sneaking in. USC is going to get tested early against LSU. And in the 14th playoff era, the Big Ten bookended with championships. Ohio State winning the first, Michigan winning the most recent. So now the Big Ten with Michigan having won a national championship and Ohio State emptying the vault to bring in some star players for NIL. Where does that leave Ryan Day and the Buckeyes coming into this season? Yeah, and I think that's a great place to start. Obviously, the number two team in the country behind Georgia. But if you think about what has happened over the last few years in Columbus, Ohio, and obviously the state of Ohio is what it is. It is a football place. They are football people, and they all love the Buckeyes. All Michigan has done to them over the last few years is smack them, smack them right in the mouth in columbus in ann arbor then they go in the national championship and what's everybody in ohio doing yeah ryan days won a bunch of games but he can't win the big one that one being the michigan game so with chip kelly coming over to run the offense will howard getting transferred in there caleb downs on the defensive side of the ball judkins running back who is untackleable in college football 25 for good reason <laughs> if the ohio state buckeyes don't win this year i am worried that we will now be a country of 49 states because the state of ohio <laughs> will actually burn through the earth poor <laughs> coach well, I, good I, I, I do agree that ohio state has a really good roster and I, I think ryan day probably likes his roster i think the the key to the drill is how is will howard going to play at quarterback you know for them and can they manage the expectations you know, the worst thing for a team is to have these kind of expectations, have this kind of anxiety, 
you know, on your players that they've got to go accomplish something rather than just go and compete in one play at a time and go out there and play. You know, Oregon, Penn State, Michigan, they're all going to be good, and I think USC is a dark horse. Nobody knows that better than you. You live that. How does Ryan Day deal with that? That expectations and almost unrealistic expect. If you gave him advice, what would you say? Well, the biggest thing that I always told our players was you got to play one play at a time like it has a history of life of its own. So go have fun, compete, be the best player you can be. And the scoreboard means nothing. All these external factors mean nothing until the game is over. So prepare the way you prepare. Don't worry about losing. Focus on what you have to do to be the best player you can be and, and just stay focused on that and, and keep the team together. Forget yeah. about all these external factors. Yeah, and there's so many of them, especially, so many. you know, yeah, it's hard. It's hard Invention to of rat poison yeah, right yeah. there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I, I tell you, this conference this year with, with the four teams coming in from, from out west, it's, it's got tremendous depth. We talked a lot about Dylan Gabriel, the expectations on Oregon. I'm fascinated with Michigan. I can't remember a team winning a national championship and almost – a forgotten team coming back the next year. Think about what they lost, Dad. You know this. Five offensive linemen, J.J. McCarthy, Blake Corum, all those incredible leaders on defense. And now you look at these guys that are going to be playing in 2023 or 2024. A lot of these guys played a lot of ball last year. I, I might be crazy. I think Michigan is in a – I'm not saying they're going to win the Big Ten. I'm much higher on Michigan than I think a lot of people because of I think they got again this new chip on their shoulder for 2024. No one's talking about them. No one cares about them. No one respects them. And these are the defending champs. So I think they're interesting. Oregon, obviously, Ohio State. And, and, I, and I really think Penn State, if Drew Aller can come along and the receivers, they're also a playoff uh, potential caliber team. Seems to me Michigan has the best cornerback in the country in Will Johnson. Best, they, they've best, got defense a best defensive lineman. lineman. Yeah, and uh, Mason Graham. They also have a couple other guys up front. The defense should be fine. The question is quarterback. No experience yep. there. The presumed guy, the lead, has thrown one pass in his career. Didn't throw any last year, even though he had some time on the field. Pete's with us. Pete, what is Sharon Moore looking at right now in terms of that quarterback race in Ann Arbor? Well, Sharon's playing a little coy publicly, Reese, but sources have told me that Michigan has given Alex Orgy a majority of the first team reps in practice. He's the expected starter right now within that program. What will we see from Alex Orgy? We'll see some quarterback run game. We'll see a different identity for Michigan's offense. He's only played 25 snaps in his career, Reese, but remember, he was in real snaps against Ohio State, against Iowa in the Big Ten title game, against Coach Saban in the Rose Bowl last year. So he comes with a rare amount of big game experience for a guy who's only thrown one pass. So, Des, as you look at this now, you know this program well, obviously. How does this look to you? Yeah, we were at dinner the other night, and I was asked the same exact question. And we talked about in the meeting yesterday, Coach Saban, it's like they have so many unknowns, you really can't give a strong opinion about this Michigan team. But the flip side is you understand they have a culture there and a style of play that's sustainable. So even with this big transition, Bunch of different coaches, offensive line is new. You have a tremendous amount of confidence in Coach Moore. Don't forget, he coached an offensive line two years in a row that won the Joe Moore Award. That has never happened in college football. So if there's a person who you have the slight bit of confidence that he's going to be able to get it done, especially up front, then it's Jerome Moore. We talk about the quarterback. In the meeting, I said, listen, they can run the ball all they want. They're going to be stubborn running the ball. But at some point, the quarterback's going to have to make a throw. Yep. Yep. And you got to have a guy back there who's going to make a throw. So whoever's going to be, he can't just be a, you know, a guy who's going to run the RPOs or run the ball a lot, Pat. He's going to have to make some throws in those big games. And I assume he's going to get coached very well on the offensive side. But on the defensive side, the new coach in town, Ooh, yeah. Wink Martindale. Oh, yeah, 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 he yeah, yeah. is He's a man who real. is one of the greatest defensive minds to ever come through the NFL. Right. Now he's going to college. I can't wait to see what he does with that defense. Yeah, me too. Right. Remember, there are no more divisions in the Big Ten now, so it's going to be the teams with the two best records. And if you look at schedules, and I am a firm believer, if you're not good enough, a loss will find you, even if your schedule's easy. But there's a team that misses Ohio State, Michigan, Oregon, Penn State, and Iowa. Rutgers, Scarlet Knights. Rutgers. Would you uh, put yeah. them I, among your sleepers I, there because of that? I think Rutgers and Maryland getting out of the East are going to benefit the most. I think both of those, because of schedules, I think have a shot. And I think that a flyer on Nebraska. That's putting a lot on Dylan oh, Rayola yeah. as a true freshman. 
but I got a lot of confidence in Matt Rule building that program back, kind of a sleeping giant. I think I think Nebraska could I'm be seven, they could be seven and zero oh yeah. by the time they go to Columbus. I'm with you because I saw Matt Rule on your show. And he really sold the program to me. I like what he was saying. I like their schedule. I think that they can be a, a dark horse. I don't think they're going to win the Big Ten. No. But I think they can uh, make sure. some noise and upset some teams. Look out for Iowa. Oh, hey, yeah. oh, every year. His, every year. Especially with the suspension here yeah. of Kirk Ferentz, one game. The OC. I, that can kind of rally. That can kind of yeah. rally a team. Not that they need it over there. Iowa's always going to be tight. But look out for the Hawkeyes. Yeah. You know, I, I really think USC, who... People are kind of disrespecting now. Lincoln Riley's always going to have a good offense. I don't care who the quarterback is. He'll make it work. And now that they have this uh, yeah. new defensive coordinator, Anton Lynn, who really turned UCLA around a year ago, if they could play better defense, they're going to be a, they're going to challenge some of these teams in the Big Ten. And they play LSU week one at Las Vegas. Reese and I will be courtside watching that one. That'll be fun. <laughs> Looking forward to that. And by the way, you mentioned Danton Lynn. Congratulations to Danton and his wife. I was talking to him the other day. I said, hey, what you doing? He goes, oh, my wife just had a baby. I said, well, get off the phone with me. <laughs> and, uh, he was like, okay, no, we've taken care of that. Just a quick break. So he, you know, Sharon Moore is going Sharon to Moore, be yeah. the coach of the year if he solves all the problems that yeah. he has in Michigan yeah. b based on what he has to replace and what he has to Absolutely. do. But I think he's very capable, and I think he's done a great job there. And playing against these guys now, they can run, a, run the ball now. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm just telling you, that running back they got, it, Edwards, is, a, is real. really something. And they got yeah, a guy yeah. behind yeah. Washington really found out. Hey, yeah. hey, hey, nobody, I think, has done a better job in the NIL portal era than Michigan right. making the block M most important than the individual. They've done a heck yeah. of a job. They, those kids Great point. play Great point. for Michigan. Yeah. They don't play for yeah. I, I agree. Love Shrum more. Love Big Ten. <laughs> Penn State's got yep. a monster week one. So everything can change <laughs> in the Big Ten conversation after one day in Morgantown, <laughs> West Virginia. G G they, they've got a new offensive coordinator, too, coming over from Kansas and Andy Kotelnicki. We'll see if he can get Drew Aller to get some more big plays for them. Uh, no fridge to reach into, but still an Affleck trivia question. Yes, we do have an Affleck trivia question, Reese. Which FBS like teams besides Hawaii will travel the most miles this year. Oh, I, I saw this. <laughs> uh, we, got, Stanford, we got time, though. Cal, Stanford? Nope. No? Well, uh, one, of them, one of them is in L.A., but they won't stay in L.A. You don't know more about them? UCLA. Yeah. Yep. UCLA. UCLA? Yes. Oh. They got a trip uh, on top of the Big Ten They got to put Scataway? Uh, I believe on the so. Board. Oh, good. But they got to go to the LSU out of conference. That's yeah. right. People Over 22,000. 22,000 miles. How, how many miles is it here? Ah, it's like Ireland? It's like 4,000 for each of these teams. We're about across. to test it post show, Jeez. right? We're going to test that out. We're going to watch the game. We're going to hang out with some Florida State fans <laughs> at a pub. Do the whole thing. <laughs> sounds awesome. Me and Kirk Herb Street. That sounds awesome. See you at the pub. That sounds like a blast. Tell them which one. See you at J.R. Mahans. You know, and if you don't like it, Polka Mahons. You know, I mean, that is, uh, I believe that's kiss my ass in Irish. <laughs> I believe. I'm not sure. I've been saying a lot of things over the last few years. <laughs> they just tell you to just tell you to say it. And you go with it, right? No, they said it to me about a thousand oh, times. Really? So, so I just kind of caught it. I didn't think it was a hello. Who was that you... band yesterday? Oh, the Trad Bond. You're talking about the traditional Bond. Yeah, they, they were great lads. Right? Great lads. <laughs> and then we had some dancers too. We had some Irish. You were dancers. dancing with Miss Terry. Miss yeah. Terry has great Ms. rhythm. Miss Terry's going to do that later on game day. Miss Terry is awesome. Yeah. Coach Saban was in the pub. We he, wasn't, the yeah, he wasn't dancing, was he? No, he wouldn't get up. And I, yeah. Even during I've the seen them. I've seen them dance before. He'll dance. Oh, He'll dance. Dance. Like the dance. In, the, in the living room. Yeah. You remember what he was doing? You got some rhythm. Whatever it is. We got a Geico season preview storylines for the group of five. This is clearly not a. Group of five type dance. This is Power Five, the week perhaps NFL. Oh, well, last night was a Power <laughs> Five. <laughs> you powered through. Power night, yeah. Geico season preview. Remember, in the new playoff structure, the highest ranked conference champion from the group of five will get a spot in the playoffs. Here are some things. New teams added via realignment. Army is going to the American. The Army Navy game will not be a conference game. Kennesaw State, just outside of Atlanta in the Conference USA. The best chance to reach the college football playoff right now. Spencer Danielson and Boise State along with UTSA's right there. Liberty, who got a New Year's Six bid last year but has a dreadfully weak schedule, is among those. So who is the best team in the group of five? 
I'm going with Jamie Chadwell and Liberty. I think they're looking at their second straight undefeated regular season. So I'm going Liberty. I'm going with Boise State. Wow. Maddox, Maddox Madsen wins the starting quarterback job over Malachi, and it's a big story. Gene T, the running back, can move. Give me the Boise State. I think Memphis State has a chance to move in there. Huh? I mean, uh, you, nobody knows who this team's going to be. There's always somebody that nobody talks about that moves up in the top 25. There's yeah. always somebody in the top 10 that falls out of always. race. Yeah. So, I mean, it's hard to pick who this is. You know, I spent my entire coaching career accosting people who <laughs> speculate, make predictions, <laughs> and ask hypothetical questions. <laughs> What? Now you're in this world. So now I'm in this world. This yeah. is my gig, and it's hard. Yeah, yeah you better be right. Oh, you better be right. Hard. Yeah, you better be right, too. I, better be right. I, I, think, I think Boise State, you know, I, I think they're prime. They got some good skill. They've settled on the quarterback, which is a bit of a surprise. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I think the team can really rally around that. I think that this is one of those years, that blue turf, uh, they could be in that playoff this year. Yeah, as you, you mentioned, Maddox Madsen wasn't expected to win it. They have Malachi Nelson, who is a highly touted recruit, transfer yeah. from USC, hasn't won the job yet. Watch out for G.J. Kenny in Texas State. Jordan oh. Lyle coming over from James Madison, the quarterback. Okay. We've got the MEAC SWAC Challenge tonight, 7.30 Eastern time on ABC. That's Florida A&M against Norfolk State. You know, FAMU has a new head coach. It's James Colsey, the third. He's the outstanding Seminole and those great Bobby Bowden teams in the 90s, part of a national championship team. Takes over for Willie Simmons, who left an assistant gig at Duke after going 12-1 and last year. HBCU national champions. Had a great defense a year ago that picked up 17 passes. Daniel Richardson, FAU transfer, should take over at quarterback. Spartans, on the other hand, return their top two rushers. They'll try to get things going. They're coming off a tough season. And FAMU, after that 12-1 campaign, will try to follow it up tonight. And the FCS kickoff, a little bit of a doubleheader. The UNA Lions from the beautiful Shoals area on the banks of the Tennessee River opening up. And then FAMU and Norfolk State tonight at 7.30 Eastern time on ABC and also available on ESPN Plus, as always. Arby's week one menu. We told you earlier we're going to be in College Station for Notre Dame and Texas A&M. But look at that high wow, noon kickoff that. right after game day on ABC. Look at that triple header on ABC. That's fantastic. Clemson, Georgia, Miami, the Gators ended up in the evening that night. Nice, nice way to get things started there with Notre Dame and Texas A&M down at Kyle Field. We've mentioned that USC LSU game a couple of times. We'll look forward to that. So, as we make predictions for this new 12 team playoff era, are the Bulldogs headed back to the top in the SEC, or is it Texas, or is it Lane Kiffin, who just likes some soft drinks? Or in the punting pride of Ireland, homecoming today at Georgia Tech on special teams. This summer, there's no better time to experience the latest Mercedes-Benz has to offer. Make your dreams come true. But the choice won't be easy. With exceptional offers on the E-Class sedan, C-Class sedan, CLE Cabriolet, and CLE Coupe. Hurry, these dream offers won't last forever. Come in now through September 3rd. Dog food in the fridge? It's not dog food. It's fresh pet. Real meat, real veggies. Real weird. He was bad luck anyway. This is a story about the one. The one who keeps it all moving. He is measured, precise. He thinks ahead, stocks the right parts, and knows just where to find them. Because for the one, this facility is about more than business. The industrial grade products you need delivered fast. Call clickgranger.com or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Your Wyndham is waiting. Whether it's for the bucket lists, the free breakfasts and Wi Fi, or the romantic getaways. 
With 24 trusted brands by Wyndham to choose from, your Wyndham is waiting. Get the lowest price at WyndhamHotels.com. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Where'd you get? Oh, I got another double shot, double cream, double froth, double pump, double whip, double hot, double calf, double sweet. Hey, did you know that Discover doubles your cash back at the end of the first year? You are cut off. You earn, we match. Debbie. Unlimited cash back match. Hi, we're Visible. Getting set to travel this summer and need a wireless plan that'll keep you connected on the go? Do it with one line and unlimited 5G data for just 25 bucks a month. For faraway adventures, Global Pass keeps you connected in 140 countries. And covers just about anywhere with unlimited hotspot included, powered by Verizon. From road tripping to globe trotting, winning at summer travel starts with Visible. Switch at Visible.com and travel like a champion. Getting a fresh deal at Subway has never been easier. Just buy any footlong in the app, get another free. The only hard part is telling Travis he doesn't get the second footlong. Wait, seriously? I got you next time, buddy. Order now in the Subway app. Life doesn't stop for a cold. Honey. Honey. Daycool Severe Honey. Powerful cold and flu symptom relief with a honeylicious taste. Dayquil Honey, the honeylicious daytime coughing, aching, stuffy head fever, power through your day, medicine. Let's go. The ship is incredible. It feels like living in a science fiction movie. We just saw what no one has seen before. Wow, look at that. Oh my gosh. Well, get ahead. Hang on. We are heading into the unknown. Hammer, hammer, hammer. It doesn't get any more cutting edge than this. Come home. College game day is in Ireland this morning. Come back over the Bridge of Tears. All you children of the diaspora. Come home. And when you come home, you can have a dream journey for golfers, tourists, milers across the country. So many legendary courses. From the Challenge of La Hench, you can see the beauty of Waterville, the old head golf links as well. And County Kerry you can feel the history of this sport, which they enjoy so much. But their manor will play host to the Ryder Cup in 2027. And what a crowd we have there. And look, there's young Addison Gallero, the daughter hey. of the intrepid producer, Casey G. She's How throwing the up. What How a chance did she find oh, that? That's crazy. Cool. That was awesome. That's cool. Addison having a good time. Brent Key, the head coach of the Yellow Jackets, hoping that he has a great time today as they open against Florida State. Brent, thanks for being with us. Uh, you guys have played so well since you've been the head coach there against ranked conference opponents. What do you expect from your team in terms of mindset and preparation for this game today? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, the, the mindset should be right. I mean, we, we work a lot on that uh, preparation. And when you get to these, these types of games, and you, first, especially the first game of the season, you got to go back, you got to trust your preparation, uh, play one play at a time. And, you know, we, we try to be the type of team that, that is not going to look at the scoreboard and play for 60 minutes. And it took us a while last year to get to that point, but hopefully we continue. Brent, I think that you guys have done a fantastic job on offense. Uh, you're one of the best teams in the ACC last year offensively. How much has your defense improved, do you feel, this year that's going to help you be more competitive? Yeah, Coach. I mean, that was the number one thing we had to address at the end of the season. Uh, and it started with uh, bringing Tyler Santucci and, and the rest of the staff in. Uh, and, and getting the guys to work. We've made some acquisitions in, the, in uh, the portal and had some freshmen come in that'll be able to help us. And, you know, the, <coughs> well, and I feel like they're in a good place, but, you know, it's relative to our own team though right now. So that's why we play the first game and see where we're at. And uh, I think we'll have a, uh, a really good afternoon. Hey, Brent, Kirk, what, you, you were with Coach Saban, 16, 17, and 18, if I remember right. What, what did you take away from that and how you try to build your culture and what you're trying to do there at Tech? You know, the biggest thing, you know, inside the building, the biggest thing is the, is the work ethic, but the efficiency within the work ethic. Uh, but for the team, it's the, it's the constant coaching of the mindset and, and, and the mentality of playing the next play, not worrying about the last play. You know, all the things you hear all the time, you know, there's no scoreboard. 
be where your feet are. And that's a mentality that takes a long time to develop. It really does. And we've worked since day one to instill that into our kids. And it's not just the kids, instill it into the uh, coaches and the staff and have everyone believe the same way. So. Coach, uh, we can't thank you enough for spending time with us here as you walk around. And you talk about culture and building the mindset and everything that every building is trying to do. God bless you there. Um, at the end of last year, it feels like you guys were playing fantastic football. Haynes King came flying in and started dominating. How did you continue to ride that momentum from the end of last year? And did you feel as if your culture did finally click then? Yeah, we did. Uh, you know, we were playing the, the way we want to play, and we try to make things really black and white for these kids. I and mean, there's so much gray in everything that they that, that they have to deal with externally. So to make things as black and white, and really comes down to building our toughness, building our discipline, all right, being committed to yourself, number one, individually, uh, before you can even think about collectively. So to focus on the individual first, and then the, the position, the unit, the team second, uh, and then the the to be able to have. A team put all those things together though you know to have them one at a time I think it's you know not as hard but to put all those things together uh, and, and have the team live it every single day and, and really believe those things and with success comes more belief in, uh, in what you're building. Coach thanks again for doing this and good luck today. I just want to ask you about Zeke Biggers. What does he bring to your defense and what type of uh, player is he inside and outside the locker room? Yeah, you know, Zeke's a young guy to be a senior. He's only 20 years old. Uh, he's, he's one of those guys that was a naturally really big kid growing up. So he's really, you know, he's starting to mature. So it's the maturity that he's really had from January to now. Uh, a lot of that's a credit to him, but a lot of that's a credit to Jess Simpson. His position coach has come in and really done a really good job of, of, of teaching him, uh, teaching him the fundamentals of the position, building a relationship with him off the field and in, in, in a trust that, I mean, Zeke's, you know, he's not the only one, the other D lineman as well, but Zeke will run through a wall uh, for Jess, and uh, I'm excited to watch him play tonight. I really am. You got that Dan Campbell look going on down there. I got to tell you, let, let, let me ask you this. What decides the outcome of the game today? Line of scrimmage. Uh, you know, I think the line of scrimmage is going to be big. Uh, it, it starts there and it ends there, but we got to be able to control the football. Uh, field position is going to be big in this game, especially when, with, with the unknowns they, going into a first game. We got to possess the football. We got to tackle well in space. Uh, you know, we've got to play efficient ball. We, we, we can't be. We have to. Have, you know, when we take our chances, you know, they, they have to be calculated. Uh, we, we can't be risky. And, and I think in first games, everybody's trying to figure out, uh, figure out each other. You know, figure out their own team, figure out the other team, figure out the flow of the game. So you know, what might start off slow, uh, you know, then it'll pick up is the second, third, fourth quarter, but we got to play a full 60 minutes. We really do. And then you know, we've prepared well. Uh, we've practiced well. Uh, expect our guys to go out and play hard today, and we'll see what happens at the end. The roots of alignment saying the game will be won on the line of scrimmage and challenge for the Tech defense last year. Brent, we certainly wish you the best. Thank you for spending some time with us. Appreciate you guys. Go Jack. Brent Key. Starter on the offensive line. Alumnus leading the Jackets. You know, starting back in 1988 was when American football first came over here, and there were high school games that were played over the last few days. Four American teams, a couple of teams from Europe playing here in Ireland. But you know, today, Ireland always seems to call people back home, and as Jen Latta joins us, Jen, it seems that, you know, you look at a, a special teamer for the Yellow Jackets, and it'll be a really uh, unique afternoon and opportunity for him. Certainly will be, Reese. You know, this is pretty identifiable back in the States and easy to find. But about a decade ago, when punter from Georgia Tech David Shanahan went looking for one of these here in Ireland, he couldn't find one anywhere. And that was just the initial hurdle in a journey that has spanned three continents and today brings him back to where it all began. I grew up in a place called Castle Island, like three and a half hours from Dublin. Pretty small town, about 2,000 people. Sport was definitely kind of a focal point of my childhood. I pretty much played everything growing up. Two main sports are probably Gaelic football and rugby. Gaelic football is like soccer mixed with rugby and a bit of basketball thrown in. Probably the biggest sport in Ireland. Growing up in Ireland, 
Georgia Tech punter David Shanahan would watch American football on his computer. Even at a young age, he says he noticed that a number of the specialists were international, like him, which inspired David to use that same computer to buy a $30 plastic football and a chance. First time I punted American football, I'd say I was about 16 in my backyard. I had no idea that it wasn't like a, a real football or what a real football looked like. At the start, I didn't really want anyone to know I was kicking American footballs. So I'd get up at like 5 a.m. before anyone woke up and I'd just cycle to our local football field. When you watch guys on TV, they make it look so easy, they're so effortless, but it's actually really hard. <laughs> In 2019, when David was 18, he continued his punting education at Pro Kick Australia, a well-known kicking academy that transitions international athletes to the American game. But then COVID shut down competition worldwide, and David found himself back in Ireland, punting to the cows on his uncle's dairy farm. Football fields were all closed, so we just Go up there, three or four footballs, and I'd kick them, and my brother Rob would chase them. And cows were looking at us, <laughs> the neighbors were looking at us, but <laughs> I didn't have any concept of saving my leg back then, so I'd probably rip 200 until my leg fell off. In 2021, he became the first Irish born college football player to earn a full scholarship when he began his career at Georgia Tech. And four weeks into that season, against a ranked UNC squad, he had his welcome to the league moment. I kicked the ball, I'm looking up, and this dude just cleans me, shoulder straight to the chest. Shanahan was just blistered on the punt. That looked pretty rough right there. It looked pretty rough. Trainers are asking me if I'm all right. I was like, I think I'm okay. <laughs> I remember my mom calling me after the game, and she's like, I thought they weren't supposed to hit you. I was like, me too, mom. <laughs> And now, as he opens his senior season in Ireland, back where it all began, he knows the next generation of Irish punters is watching him. You can see there's a lot more international guys coming over now. That's something that I'm proud of. Looking back, it was definitely a lot harder than I thought it would be, but I mean, I'd do it 10 times over if I had to. It's still pretty surreal the way it all kind of worked out. can't even imagine the emotions that David Shanahan is going to feel today as he takes the field here in Ireland, his home country. And when we asked him, who are some of the American punters whose videos you would pull up on the internet, who you studied? Well, there was only one, and he had Irish blood pumping through his veins as well, guys. Patrick McAfee. Have you heard of him, lads? Yeah. <laughs> Jen, incredible piece. And uh, shout out to David Shanahan, obviously, he is going to demolish footballs all over this stadium today and all year for Georgia Tech. And I think if you look at the ball kicking countries, like mention Gaelic football and you mention Australia, Aussie rules football in Scotland, there's rugby. Jamie Gillen's made it. It has been a great way to expand our game internationally is through these kickers and uh, obviously Shanahan and Charlie Smith, who's currently kicking for the Saints, is a big Irish success story as well. You know what? You look at uh, Shanahan here, he's got about 100 people who are going to be here to watch him. And Haynes King told him the other day, he said, no, what a shame. All of your countrymen coming to see and all they're going to see you do is hold on PAT. Yeah, hey, that's a dream come true. <laughs> Punters don't want to punt. They want to have pints afterwards. But if you got to bomb the ball a little bit, Shanahan will do that. I can't wait to watch him. 91 minutes away from the kickoff of the ACC. And... The ACC will get started today. We're closing in on the start of the Big 12 season, which has a whole new look. Two cornerstone programs are gone, Texas and Oklahoma. You know, Sooners won 14 Big 12 titles for half of the crowds in the Big 12's existence, 10 more than anybody else, including Texas. But now, when you add the four former Pac-12 teams to go in, Add it all up for the American teams that came in last year. Half of the conference has been in two years or less. Got a couple of new head coaches. Jed Fish off to Washington. Brent Brennan, a former GA for Dick Tomey in Arizona. Now the head coach and Willie Fritz taking over at Houston. Now, as you look at the preseason top 25 from the AP, you don't get to a Big 12 team until you get to Utah. You'll hear people say the Big 12 is deep. I don't think it's deep. I think the Big 12 is wide. 
because you look at the championship turnstile, you've had four champions, different champions in a row, and seven of the eight teams in the conference championship game the last four years have been different teams. So you don't have a deep conference. You have a wide conference where everybody's going to play close games. Everybody's going to be in contention for a while. Here. I think it really comes down to who's going to stay healthy. Who, who can take advantage of health in a, in a better schedule I, on paper? Utah looks to be the team to beat. We all love Cam Rising. We miss Cam Rising. It's great to see him back. And let's be honest, what, what Pat Whittingham's done, they're coming off a disappointing year. Eight and five last year. We got a veteran defense. Keithy uh, that's back to tight end. I think Utah is the team to beat in that wide conference that you're talking about. I, I definitely agree with that, uh, Kirk. Uh, with the quarterback coming back and the culture of toughness they have at Utah, I think it's going to be you know, the, their, their conference to win. But I think Oklahoma State, with all the experience they have coming back, Kansas State with Avery Johnson, yeah. very impressive quarterback, and they always play good defense. Kansas has Jalen Daniels and some really good players. So, but I think Utah, because of their physical style of play and Cam Rising coming back is going to be the difference. I agree with you, Kirk. I like Utah style of play, but you said, can they stay healthy, right? Teams in this conference, can Cam Rising stay yeah. healthy? That's a big question mark. Guys, don't sleep on UCF. Yeah. They got K.J. Jefferson, the That's quarterback right. from Arkansas. No one's talking about now, he K.J. He might be like in that Cam Newton mode. Now, yeah. he's not going to be Cam because Cam was a monster. Yeah. But you get Gus Mars on with K.J. I think he could bring out the potential. So make sure, oh, make sure you watch out for UCF, bro. Here he comes. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Big 12 runs through Morgantown, West Virginia. <laughs> hey, and Gary Green is going to run wild. And they get a big one against Penn State. They win that game. Okay. <laughs> now we're talking. But Oklahoma State. What Ollie Gordon was able to do after week three. Last veteran year, team. they kind of dropped him in. Offensive line's back. Ollie Gordon's back. Gundy cut his mullet, but he said it's going to be back in like six weeks or so. <laughs> Defense is ready to go. The Big 12 is going to be electrifying per usual. But West Virginia, Okie State, obviously, are the two at the top. And all these teams, well, it seems like we've hit every team. Isn't it a perfect year for Iowa State? Isn't it a perfect oh, year for them gamble. to just kind of have a chance to get up there and and get to that conference championship yeah, they're one game. They're the two or three most experienced yeah, teams. Yeah, exactly. that's what I'm saying. It, it, it'd be just like Matt Campbell this year. But, but uh, I'm, I'm rooting for Pat and the West Virginia Mountaineers. I didn't pick them, but I'm rooting for them. <laughs> Hell yeah. He's a West Virginia guy at the end of the day. Yeah, he's a hillbilly from way back. Sometimes he forgets. Kirk, Kirk likes to bust my chops, you know, when I'll sneak into production and go, oh, look at him. He uh, thinks he has the answer comes, key. Here he comes. <laughs> the answer key yeah. is Kansas. Stanford wow. State. They're going to the playoff, man. I without love it. Lance Leipold. Without a home Dan stadium? Wow. Yeah, that's right. They'll be playing They're some They're going to play games all over the place. That's a big call. Jalen Daniels, I, I agree with Utah. I, I like the idea of Utah with the portal, what they've done. They brought in a bunch of wide receivers. And now with Cam being able to throw the football, yeah. Coach touched on the toughness that Utah brings to the table. That, that's, a, that's an odds-on favor. I will keep an eye on Fafita in Arizona. I was gonna say, no yeah. one brought up. No Arizona. one brought him up. Brett yeah. Brennan is a great, great coach. Yeah. And if they could stay healthy, I think depth in this league. We talked about the injuries. You got to keep your quarterback healthy. Yes. Yep. That's exactly. huge in this league because yep. when you look at other rosters, there's a lot of teams that guys, took guys from this. Guys, conference. it's another league we're sitting here talking about getting to eight, nine teams. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, yeah. it's. It, I think that's what college football it's, is this year. Right. Is you're not two or three teams in each league. You're talking about seven, eight, nine teams that yeah. could be competitive. A bunch of Davis, no Goliaths. Yeah. yeah. And you yeah. know what? I know you love the wide receivers. I think Arizona's got the best wide receiver in the country. Oh. Ted Rowe and McMillan, Fafita McMillan. Yeah. Oh. It's going to be a fun conference. It is. There's a Goliath, Des. Oh, I forget. The Mountaineers. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Jeez. Boy, can you imagine? I know you're going to Morgantown with the show. Can you oh. imagine if College Game Day goes to Morgantown? Oh, oh I legitimately yeah. cannot. It would be going, amazing. You're going next week, right? <laughs> I know. I think it's going to be like Dublin again. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. 12 team playoff picks coming up. Wonder if West Virginia will make somebody's bracket. DJ Uyungavale with EJ Manuel, former Seminole Three, one of our ESPN colleagues. A promise is a trust not to be broken. Whether spoken with an oath, do you solemnly swear? It's your first day. You know I got your back, right? Or seal with a pinky. In 1922, a group of soldiers launched USAA with a promise to take care of their own. And after 100 years, we're still taking care of the military community and their families. That's our mission, always. 
Is this really happening? He's not gonna pick her. No. Reese's Pieces and Cookie Dough together in a DQ blizzard. I wonder if they're still together. No. Spoiler alert, the Reese's Pieces Cookie Dough Blizzard is like really good. DQ, happy tastes good. Rated T for Teen. These are dangerous times. At least that's what I hear. The Empire, they're everywhere. The world here belongs to the syndicates. I'm here to offer you a way out, okay? It'll be dangerous. But if you pull this off, you'll never look over your shoulder again. I've been held back my whole life. And now, I just need a chance to finally be free. Star Wars Outlaws, available August 30th. Pre-order Star Wars Outlaws for Xbox. At Domino's, our stores now have quality captains. Horrific. Thank you for the feedback. Terrible. Pathetic. It's a yes. They're demanding perfection for your pizza. I hate it. Thank you. Let's hear it for the biggest stage of all. Thriving on its electricity, vibrancy, humanity, a kaleidoscope of experiences. If you're looking for that soul, that unbreakable spirit, that drive to go the distance, you've come to the right place. The U.S. Open, August 26th through September 8th on ESPN. Hey, Flo. Cool leg warmers. Thanks. They're just for the bus ride to work. They're not part of the official uniform. No tunes today? No. My apartment was robbed last night. <gasps> Took my cable-ready TV, VCR, portable cassette player. Yep, all the latest tech. If only Progressive had renter's insurance, like their home insurance. Then we could bundle our cars and get the same 24-7 protection. I think we just invented that. <gasps> this is the best day ever. Well, I still got robbed. It's still a pretty good day. Labor Day savings are here. Let's put fall into motion, tackle turning colors, warm up welcomes, and add light to lawns. Fall starts with Labor Day savings at the Home Depot. The anticipation, oh, it's like that roller coaster you're waiting to get on, and once you're on it, there's no getting off. Especially when you get this close, you can kind of feel it in the air. It's crazy, you know, everybody's on the edge of their seat waiting to kick it off. Tell people it's like modern day gladiators, you know? So feel like no other. You got those good nerves and butterflies in your stomach. They're at the point where they want to pop, they want to go get it. Florida State, Georgia Tech coming up at noon Eastern time. And then look at this Labor Day weekend on ESPN and ABC. The entire weekend starts Thursday night. Deion Sanders in Colorado against the Bison of North Dakota State. Temple OU on Friday night, and the triple header we have referenced on Saturday. And Sunday night, USC and LSU in Vegas. But it all starts with Buzz the Yellow Jackets and Georgia Tech taking on the Seminoles today. A little Irish dancing going on as we are taking college game day and have taken college game day. International road trip for the first time. As you look at today's protest presented by Goodyear and new Seminole quarterback, DJ Uyunglele started his career at Clemson, believed to be the heir apparent to Trevor. And then you look at how it went last year playing for Jonathan Smith at Oregon State. He started 12 games, and many around the Florida State program will tell you showed great growth playing in that pro-style system for Smith in Corvallis. So before the trip to Ireland, DJ Uyunglele gifted every player on the Seminoles team a pair of Beats headphones. Earlier this season, before they went to ACC Media Days, the logical choice was to take their veteran quarterback they had acquired in the portal and let him talk about the team. DJ suggested that maybe a member of the ACC Championship squad from last year would be a better fit. Selfless. Alex Atkins, our offensive coordinator, saying that's how he's established himself, by being humble, being a leader. But make no mistake about it. If the Seminoles are going to reach their potential and their goals to make the college football playoff, 
DJ Uyangarule is going to have to be front and center. Spent time with DJ Manuel. DJ Uyunglele is back in the ACC. DJ officially has decided to transfer from Oregon State to Florida State. He's also going to get the opportunity to play Clemson, so nothing like flaunting your new relationship in front of that old ex. We got DJ U in the building. First off, looking good and guarding the gold, my friend. Yeah, appreciate that, bro. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What went into the decision of coming to Florida State? Just trying to find a place where I feel I can get better at, a place where it's going to best fit me. A coaching staff, a coach, an offense that's going to be able to fit me and my skill set. And I mean, I found it here with Coach Norvell and everybody else here. My thing was, hey, how can I make this program better and how can you make me better? Those honest conversations I'm able to have with Coach Norvell, and you know, I haven't had that a lot in some of the places I've been. Like, that's that's something I value and I enjoy. Oh, young oh, LA rifles one complete, and there's the arm talent. That's what DJU brings to a football team, that ability to stand in there and unleash a rocket. As far as this offense, you know, under Coach Norvell, um, how does it fit your game? He bases his offense around the playmakers he has on his team. So the quarterbacks, the receivers, to the running backs, like his offense changes each and every year. He's able to adapt to the guys on his team. I think for him it's going to be a challenge because we have a lot of playmakers, but that's a good thing. Going back to your time at Clemson, uh, you were anointed the chosen one after Trevor Lawrence. Five-star recruit coming out of high school, played well your freshman year, uh, really showed the country who you could be. Now you're here at Florida State on your third stop. How do you focus on what's ahead of you versus what's in the past? Yeah, I think you gotta be able to still look into the past, understand like, hey, what'd you do wrong and learn from that? Cause at the end of the day, like the past is the past. You don't wanna think about it too much, but you wanna be able to learn from that. I feel like I have a lot of experience under my belt, but it's a lot of stuff that, yeah, I wanna show on camera. I wanna show on the field and just go out there and just ball for my teammates. All right, DJ, we got the film here, man. We got a couple plays last year, Oregon State at home versus Washington. Yeah. National champion runner-up. Pre-snap, explain what this route concept you're gonna have here. We need to get some points. We need to get a drive rolling. We have double posts right here. We have like a drag slash bounce, like a climb. So he's gonna drag, pass the wheel, depending on how he plays, and he's gonna bounce right over this mic back here. And I love this play, man, because your ball protection here in this pocket, I mean, there's a lot of chaos going on. This is a pretty good saucy defensive line. You do an excellent job here. Just two hands on the football when you break the pocket. Just flipping your hips. Nice and easy, man. I mean, this is a 25-yard ball to your left and throwing this on a dime when you protect your receiver. I mean, these are the types of concepts yeah. that you like too, right? No, those definitely, yeah. Deep, deep pose with the overs. Yeah, yeah kind of like that grid game. Again, you do an excellent job of climbing the pocket, getting out, buying time. Bang, first down, good guys. All right, spring game. Love this throw. Got press man on the corners. We got good speed with Malik Come out there. God. Look at that. Made a hell of a catch right here. It's a hell of a throw. Look at your feet, bro. No indecision. You already see it pre-snap. Oh, well, you down? Okay, cool, cool. I'm put my guy on your guy. See who wins. Man, I don't care if this is Champ Bailey. I don't care if this is Deion Sanders. <laughs> it don't matter. I mean, <laughs> DBs, they can't cover this stuff, man. Set, hip, flip, bang. Beautiful. Your fifth year senior, looking at the situation, you come into a 13-0 team from last year. The Orange Bowl was what it was, but now you're the guy. Do you feel like you have something to prove now? Uh, I want to say I have something to prove. Like, the outside noise, whatever people say, they have opinions about me, whatever, that doesn't really bother me or anything like that. In my heart, I know what kind of player I am. I belong here on the stage, and I just want to go out there and show the rest of the world that I believe in myself. Oh no, EJ said it didn't matter if it was Deion Sanders. He's not going to be able to ask any more questions. <laughs> I'm just kidding. There's DJU, the veteran. He's been a guy, you know, Mike Norvell has been renowned for tailoring his offense to what his quarterback strengths are. You ask those around the program, they go arm strength, man. DJU has been showing out. Pete Thamel uh, rejoined us now. Pete, 58% of the starts for Florida State last year came from transfers. Had 10 guys drafted, nine of those were transfers. They've done a great job in the portal. Who are the guys who are aspiring to be the next Jared Verse? Well, Reese, I've had multiple NFL scouts who've gone through Tallahassee this summer tell me they expect Florida State to have the best starting defensive line in all of college football. How they built that D-line is instructive to how Mike Norvell has built the program. Hey, some cheers from the Seminoles. That's nice. There's two <laughs> transfers on the defensive line. Three of the bound tackle, Daryl Jackson, and then an edge named Marvin Jones Jr. You may remember, may remember his dad with the big shoulder pads. Marvin Jones, he's a Seminole Hall of Famer. And then there's two returns. Turners, Joshua Farmer and Patrick Payton. They redshirted, were recruits of Mike Norvell, who've come in and grown up in the program. If those two transfers have the production to match their potential, don't be surprised if we see four Seminoles drafted in the top 100 this year in the NFL draft. That will be the identity of this defense.
It's going to be a handful. You talk to the Seminole offensive coaches about dealing with them in scrimmages, and Peyton's put on some weight, or Buddy Bill Connolly does that havoc play thing, and among those with 500 plays, Peyton was one of the top guys in the country. Portal's been something that's been really important to Florida State. How do you, how do you assess how it's being used now? Well, you know, the portal has evolved. In the beginning, the portal was just an instrument for a player to show everybody that he wanted to transfer. There was no name, image, and likeness, so he was just looking for a different opportunity to play. You had name, image, and likeness to it, and you got free agency. When you have free agency, you got agents. All right, so you got people out there that you can actually evaluate that are in the portal, but you also have people that you can just call and say, hey, I need a right end, I need a left tackle, I need a tailback. And those people know who's going to get in the portal and can help you bring them to your program. And, you know, in a lot of cases, it, it, there are financial ramifications now, which is a part of college football. But the portal has really evolved through the years, over the last three or four years, that you can really build your roster and help your team tremendously through the portal and the resources to know who's in the portal and how good they are. Okay, so I brought this up earlier about Iowa and Kirk Ferentz being uh, suspended for a game because of tampering for Cade McNamara two years ago. Seems petty, seems dumb. I think the future of the NCAA is good, though. So I just would like to go on the record of that. Charlie Baker Charlie. is going to figure it out. But whenever you talk about being able to talk to people and saying, hey, I need a tackle, I need an end, those agents, obviously. So they know who is potentially going to go in. Do they potentially tell people if you go in, there's three teams that are looking? Is it just yeah. like NFL free agency right, right now, basically? Absolutely. So you don't really have to tamper with the guy because there's always a third party that you can be involved with. You know, the one thing I like to say is when I retired, there were people camped out in Tuscaloosa to get players to go in the portal. Right. So if they wanted to look at somebody tampering, they should have done a little investigation right there. <laughs> <laughs> do you see it staying? Do you think it's going to stay the same, or do you think it's going to change in the future of the sport? No, I, I think it will change in the future. I think the, the court case will bring a new era and a new way to distribute money and share with players, which I think they should have the opportunity and still have name, image, and likeness opportunities. Yeah, I think name, image, and likeness is important. I really do. But I think it's being used in the wrong way. And when you combine it with the portal, and obviously you do have free agency, I guess what is the answer moving forward? It's not going to change, right? It's, this train has left the station, and there's no bringing it back. So no, allegedly, I, I, I think it is coming back. Okay. I, I think this lawsuit's going to yeah. create some parameters. Yes. There'll be some... People hate to use the term revenue sharing, but there will be some of that. Okay. And... Name, image, and likeness, well, there'll be some system where you, you can't just pay players. Right. Their market value has to equal what they're getting for whatever they do from a marketability standpoint. I am no lawyer. I've been sued by Brett Favre before, so I've been through the entirety of the situation. But what Charlie Baker laid out was this injunction, which is going to get approved by a judge. Q1 next year will give 10 years. Pretty much what everybody's heard is this 20 million bucks from the school. That'll operate like a salary cap seemingly for these schools and for right. these teams. And they're allowed to ones to be negotiating with the players as opposed to a third party entity like a collective or something else. It'll be more so driven by the school and they think it'll be regulated a lot better when that comes to You got it. sued by Brett Favre. I got sued by the photographer who took the picture of my pose in the Ohio State game. Uh, Girl, that one off the side. Hey, <laughs> shout out to all <laughs> the lawyers out there. You guys are great. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And, and, and the other thing, too, to wrap that up, something that might function somewhat similar to a contract a little bit more. There might be a little, there might be financial skin in the game for the players if they want to enter the transfer portal and leave after. It's going to get figured out, but right now <laughs> it is chaos. Right now yeah, it, it is. It's a little bit different. I mean, look at Florida State. Alex Atkins, our offensive coordinator, serving suspension, allegedly, according to reports, because he drove a recruit somewhere and dropped him off for an NIL meeting. Seems ridiculous. Anyway, here are the Home du Depot doers of the week who all came all the way from the United States to be part of this special show, the first international edition of College Game Day here in Dublin today. We thank them for being happy birthday to mom there. And Keith. Celebrating. All the Bulldogs headed back on top. We'll talk about the SEC. David Milrow, Quinn you Jackson Dart. I'd have a little something to say about that. And traditional Gaelic games. Desmond, the Heisman winner, Jess, fitness extraordinaire, your Stanford tight end, working to show if he can use that paddle to bat it. Don't go anywhere. Got lots more to come on College Game Day, but now a quick word from Buffalo Wild Wing. Who just picked up
Buffalo Wild Wings go. The Hankster! Hank! What? Jimmy already got beat ups go. Yeah, Jimmy already got beat ups go. Jimmy already got beat ups go. Jimmy already got beat ups. Okay, Jimmy already got beat ups go delivered. But did he get 10 free boneless wings? Yeah. No! Your wall is completely undefended. Okay. You need Bear Dynasty. Here, here, and here. Uh, but it's almost game time. It goes on in one coat. It really has it all. I sure do love that color. You would. Arby's is full of choices. You can get your favorite stuff three for five dollars. Incredible value. Reach in and eat whatever you grab. Arby's, we have the meats. With Armor All, a little bit of this protects you from a lot of that. Armor All, less work, more clean. I'm putting together a party for Frank Morton, the black godfather. I'm thinking Black Vegas. Ruby Vegas. I don't think you got any idea who you're stealing from. These is heavy hitters that they rob. Stealing from me? Y'all going home in a box. Bounce back fast from Heartburn with Tums Gummy Bites and love food back. No application fee if you apply by August 29th at University of Maryland Global Campus, offering online and hybrid courses and lifetime career services. Learn about our more than 135 degrees and certificates at umgc.edu. Ugh, yellow. Didn't pass the tissue test? Buckle up. Whoa! There's toothpaste white, and there's Crest 3D White Strips white. Whitens like a $400 professional treatment. Prepare for a non-stop smile. Crest. I want to hold you. <laughs> hey, I want to love you forever. Yeah. Come on, baby. Arby's is full of choices. Quick, you can get your favorite stuff. stuff, stuff, stuff. Three for five dollars. Incredible value. For a limited time, reach in and eat whatever you grab. Arby's, we have the meats. It's so on. Football happening today. Go no. Too big of a break. I'm just hiding my cousin. Nearing the top of the hour, College Green, downtown Dublin, Ireland, steps away from Trinity University, about a mile and a half away from Aviva Stadium, where that goldfish perhaps will be making the trek over to see Georgia Tech and Florida State. Uh, Paines is earlier before the show went down, took a picture with them. So I'm celebrating an anniversary here. Great signs in the crowd in keeping with our tradition. Good to see that we've been able to carry that on over here. Oh. We're here to come to game day and get married. We, taught, we showed you a seminal couple that got married earlier. 
Desmond says play Warren. Talk about Warren. Davis Warren. Yeah, Davis. Yeah, quarterback. Yeah. yeah. Is that right? Is that what you're saying? Is that your guy? Uh, or, you, or you could be that. <laughs> negative. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> negative. The committee stole my other sign. That's right. It wasn't Kirk. It was the committee. Dad Gummit. <laughs> cool. Homage to Bobby Bowden with the Dad Gummit. Garnet and Gold have going to find that opening pot of gold here. Oh, Patty McAfee gets in a little love over here. We miss you, Corso. <laughs> we'll be here next week. Kentucky Texas Giant Scooter, Florida State Legend. We'll be back next week. And oh, oh look at this one, Pat. I'm looking for a man in football, trust fund, 5'6, blue eyes, Nikki Saban. Hey, I love it. Sorry, lady. He's taken by Miss T Right there. What a wonderful lady. Coach Saban also 6'2. It's all lies. All lies. All lies. She got on me because she says I never asked her to dance after you asked her to dance. So you got me in trouble. Me and Miss Terry are doing the Irish Jake hey, yesterday. Hey, Nick, it won't be the last time we get you in trouble. <laughs> You know, football is something that is being learned here. It has a history dating back to 1988 with American college football. But there are some games, Jess Sims, that are a little more ingrained in the Irish culture. So, Reese, picture this. Steve, Des, and I walk onto a field to play a game, right? But it's not baseball. It's not football. It's not lacrosse. It's not soccer. It's not rugby. It's all of those sports, plus hockey, minus the pads. It's called hurling, and Ireland has been playing the sport for over 3,000 years. Welcome to Parnell Park, home of the Dubs. We're with our guy, Nisha. Nisha, what are we doing today? Today, we're going to learn all about Ireland's national sport, which is hurling. But to get started, we have a few superstars to help, so you need to get dressed. We are dressed. No, I need properly dressed. All righty. Where's the rest of the kit? Oh, you're <laughs> going to find out. All right. <laughs> this is a hurl. This is a slitter. We're going to practice rising the jab lift, all right? So Ashling, Dublin Camogie captain, is going to show us how to do a jab lift. All right. Let's go, Ashling. Okay, so dominant hand at the top, non-dominant hand at the bottom. Hurl flat with the ground. Going to use the skinny part under it and flick it up. Do you want to do a competition? Oh, yeah. Okay, come on, right. do it. So Somebody count 10 seconds. Do you seconds. have to use two hands? 10 seconds. No, no, no. You can no? do one hand if you want. Okay, but two. keep it easy. I'm just okay. saying. Okay. always okay. one the crowd. Okay. Yeah, always yeah, yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Three, two, one. Oh, it just hit mine. What? Two. Jess is hammering you, by the way. Four. Five. Ah, let's go! How much you get? Seven, let's go! Wow! Now that we've got the slitter in our hand, you want to run with it. Okay, so we're going to do what's called a solo run, where you put the slitter on your hurl. My man Nigel here from Tipperary is going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. Oh, Nigel. Good up, though. All right, guys, most important thing. Grip in the middle, protect it, on the hurl, and off you go. Speed, speed, speed. Oh, here we go, here we go. Here that was, I thought this was rehearsal. Naturals, <laughs> naturals. Now we're on to the most important part, scoring. One point between the uprights, three points into the net. We have our man here, eight-time All-Ireland champion, Aidan Fogarty, going to show you how to strike. And we have two-time All-Ireland champion and Dublin goalkeeper, Sean Brennan. He's going to try to stop your shots. Oh, One boy. shot each. <laughs> this face, guys, right? Ball in the hand, show it up, like baseball, just strike it through. OK? Woo! Good, baby. Oh. Nisha Cruz, this was so much fun. Clearly, we're going to keep our day jobs. Guys, hurling. Good, way better. You don't want to record that one, do you, Jeff? <laughs> it's only week zero, and my team is already doing me dirty. Let me set the record straight, OK? Once I had the proper size hurl, I was cracking that thing, OK? And as Steven does this, I went 3-0 in that jab lift competition. My PR is 10. <laughs>
Hey, I was bragging hey. on her what an athlete she was. Absolutely. Until she took a swing. Athlete, I yeah. am, Kirk. Yeah. And she you is. Are, you hey, are. The guy who was teaching us, Nisha, yeah. he's actually a huge Green Bay Packers fan. Oh, okay. It's because he saw Desmond Howard play with the Green Bay Packers. Oh, okay. And tomorrow's his, no, and tomorrow's his birthday. That's what he told me. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday Lod. Birthday. Happy yeah. birthday, Happy Lod. birthday, Nisha. What a sport. If this you is the Slitter here? Yes. Yeah, is the name of the ball? Slitter. 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 Slitter doesn't bounce until Stanford Steve throws it in a meeting yesterday, and it bounces <laughs> and destroys a mug. Yep. Good thing you didn't throw it near that crystal helmet. You hey, man, that there. thing be really? moving, though, for real. I was not listening. They that had incredible skills. Ball. Yeah, that. it is. It's a good ball. Well, as they Thinking bounce the ball around the set here, there might be a lot of bouncing around in the SEC with Texas and Oklahoma officially becoming members of the 16-team conference. Boy, what a rude welcome Oklahoma gets. They play six teams ranked in the preseason poll. Four of them away from Norman, four in the top 11, too. At least they missed Georgia. Uh, Mike Elko, one of three new head coaches in the SEC, as Nick Saban leaves Alabama. Kalen DeBoer there. Jeff Levy takes over at Mississippi State. Elko coming from Duke to Texas A&M. And in the preseason top 25, Georgia number one, 46 to 62 votes. Bama, Ole Miss, Missouri, LSU, Tennessee on the top 15. And Oklahoma and A&M also ranked the last 20 years, two decades, only twice has the SEC gone consecutive years without winning a national championship. So if you believe that history, they're due. And with the expanded field, uh, used to be the argument, Nick, about whether the SEC would get two teams in. It might be a much higher number this time around. Well, and I think this is my big thing about the way we set up the playoffs. I'm glad we have the playoffs, and I guess politically we had to do it the way we did it to get it where it is. But you have conferences that have the first team ranked number 14. We have four or five teams ranked before 14. So to get the best teams in, and they're all going to play each other, we cannot put so much emphasis on record. You, you, you have to go by quality of opponent, quality wins, yeah. You know, strength of schedule, because Georgia, Texas, Alabama, Ole Miss, LSU, Missouri, I mean, all these teams, Oklahoma, they all have a chance to have a good enough season to be in the playoffs, but they're all going to play each other. So somebody's got to lose. So anyway, that's just my pet peeve about getting the best teams in the playoffs. Yeah, he, he, he needs to join you guys on Tuesday nights when well, you guys do that thing. Well, <laughs> next week will be a good, a good discussion to kind of talk about the, yeah. the new playoff and what they're mandating. You know, they want the yeah. best teams, and yeah. regardless of their... Well, you look at the additions, right? Texas is, I think, built to play in the SEC. And the big thing about Texas is they understood, like, we can beat Oklahoma, but we need to beat the SEC teams. And they built their roster to be able to sustain that level of play in the SEC. So I think that Texas is going to have a measure of success. I still think Georgia's the top dog. Be aware of Missouri. You mentioned Missouri. They had 11 wins a year ago. They bring back Luther Burke, who may be the best receiver in college football, and Brady Cook. And don't forget, when they played Georgia a year ago, Kirby Smart was very complimentary of the way Missouri played. And they, they beat Ohio State in the bowl game. So this is a team to keep an eye on, the Missouri Tigers. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think Brady Cook has a chance to really lead that team to some great things. Burton, they, they're loaded. We've been bracing for this, and now it's here. Texas and Oklahoma. We've been debating who's built for it, who's ready for it, and now we're going to find out. But if you look at the schedules between Oklahoma and Texas, boy, Oklahoma has a grind. Uh, Texas has a trip to Ann Arbor on top of going into the SEC. But I think we're all anxious to see how Texas and Oklahoma, their styles of play. I heard you talking yesterday about Oklahoma's very skilled, but are they build in the trenches for the week in and week out right. pounding that they'll take in that conference? And I think Sark, because of his experience with you, probably ahead of time has built the trenches on both sides to be prepared for this, but time will tell. But I can't wait to see those brands in that conference competing. I mean, somebody on this table had Texas and Georgia in the SEC championship. It, I didn't say Did you say that? I, I didn't say did that. Did you say that? So, did you say that? Uh, I, that was this guy. This guy knows more about the SEC than anybody <laughs> in the history of yep. the SEC and has Texas making it to the championship, which would be obviously an insane run to come into the Southeastern Conference with how great it always is from top to bottom and be able to make it the whole way. I think the big question for me is obviously Georgia's going to be Georgia, but like Kalen DeBoer coming in to the SEC with the Alabama team, 
I'm very fascinated. They're still ranked very, very high. Milrow is back yet again. There's some leaders that have stuck around there. With his absence, yeah. I'll be excited to see if Alabama remains the team in the SEC. Well, I think we all well, – I want to come to you on this. I think we all think Kalen DeBoer is a great coach. Great, he's always a great coach. Absolutely. But stepping into that, that – the shadow of Nick Saban, I'm just curious what you think. They have great players. They're going to have a great team. But what is he going to experience being the coach after you there in Tuscaloosa? Well, all I could tell you is I went and watched last week's scrimmage on Saturday, and that team still has the same culture, you know, they had when I was the coach. They play with toughness. They play with great effort. They execute well. They've got good discipline. So Kalen has done a really good job. He's had to replace some players because so many guys transferred. But I really think Alabama, with Jalen Milrow, uh, the two running backs that they have, uh, I was worried about the defense, but I think the defense really impressed me, you know, in this scrimmage that they have come along. So if they can play the kind of defense, especially in the secondary because they lost so many players in the secondary, they're going to be right up there challenging people. But I'm going to say something about the SEC and the scheduling. If you look at everybody's schedule, Missouri has the easiest path to get in the championship game. Georgia has one of the toughest paths to get in the championship game. They got to go to Ole Miss. They got to go to Texas. They got to go to Alabama. So it's not all equal in the way these schedules are kind of set up as hard as people tried to make them that way. It was just difficult with all the changes. So that's going to have something to say about who gets in the championship game. And then is it going to be an advantage to get in the SEC championship game or a disadvantage? Uh, we talked about that before too, but I see six or seven teams that have a chance should, to win this, yeah. but somebody has to prove they can beat Georgia. The only people who have beaten Georgia in the last two or three years is Alabama. So somebody's got to prove that they can, they can beat do it. Georgia. What about Lane Kiffin this year? Right? This feels like the the old Miss year. Preseason top ten. Jackson Dart. Not, not now. Not win. Yeah, bingo. It feels like this is the year for Ole Miss and for Lane Kiffin to kind of do it. Two transfers on the defensive line, too, I think, for Texas A&M and Florida, so they beef up that entire thing. Is this the year for Ole Miss? But to your point, schedule, not easy at all down there. But, but you know what? To that point, Steve, Ole Miss is scheduled. Yeah. They don't play Alabama nope. this year. Okay. They don't play Texas. They get Georgia, who goes on the road for everybody, and Oklahoma at home. So it's, it's set up pretty well for them. We've talked about the portal all day, and he's the portal king. Self-proclaimed, right, Lane Kiffin? But when you look at what he's done and bringing Pat Brench and the defensive line, helping there, I think in three, three transfer cycles, he's brought in 26 four- and five-star guys. I believe Jackson Dart has the goods now to compete with. They have, they've struggled against Alabama and Georgia. You mentioned, don't play uh, Alabama. They get Georgia to their place. I believe Ole Miss is set up for a monster season. Did they make the look, championship game? Yes. Okay. Look, look out for, for some depth. I think we talked depth in all these other conferences. Look out for Tennessee. Tennessee. Quarterback mm -hmm. play is going to yep. be interesting. A&M. What's been missing in A&M, and I think our opinions, has just been the, that togetherness, that old school kind of what you'd expect from A&M. I think Mike Elko will create that. they got a heck of a quarterback there. And I think Auburn is a team everybody's forgetting about. Hugh Freeze calling plays. Peyton Thorne, it's almost as if people just dismiss him. He's got receivers to throw to now. Auburn could be a thorn in the side in that conference. What was it, fourth I, I, and what last year against Auburn? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think Auburn's going to be yeah. the most improved team in the league. I, I really do. I'm with you. But back to Ole Miss. Ole Miss is going to look like an SEC team up front. They've got new offensive linemen. They've got defensive linemen. They couldn't beat us, and they couldn't beat Georgia, not because of their skill, not because of their play call, not because of the way they were coached, but they could match up in the trenches, and I think they'll be able to do that this year, so they're going to be right there. A couple of those big transfers, Walter Nolan from A&M going to Ole Miss, Prince Liu, Mami Ellen coming from Florida, a great pass rusher too. So Ole Miss set up. We went ahead and said it. Not now, win for Hottie Toddy. Gosh, my, they've never been. Lane to the appreciates SEC that. Championship game. I'm, I'm sure he Hey, Lane, have, win. Have, okay. Jeez. Have, 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 a, have a Coke and a smile, Lane. College <laughs> game day in College Station. Mid Saturday morning, 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Fighting Irish coming down there. Looking forward to going down and saying howdy to our friends. 12 team playoff picks. Hypothetical situations. Predictions before teams have played. Things that. Nick may or may not be getting used to, and our guest picker, Seamus, from here in Dublin. This man took me around town last night, and we tried to drink it dry. I don't think anybody's ever accomplished that. And here come the Seminoles, unconquered top ten in the country, getting ready to take on Georgia Tech. Who just picked up?
Buffalo Wild Wings go? The Hankster! Hank! What? Jimmy already got beat ups go. Yeah, Jimmy already got beat ups go. Jimmy already got beat ups go? Jimmy already got beat ups Okay, Jimmy already got beat ups go delivered. But did he get 10 free boneless wings? Yeah. No! Hey! Oh! A promise is a trust not to be broken. I say your name. Whether spoken with an oath. Do you solemnly swear? It's your first day. You know I got your back, right? Or seal with a pinky. In 1922, a group of soldiers launched USAA with a promise to take care of their own. And after 100 years, we're still taking care of the military community and their families. That's our mission, always. Your Wyndham is waiting to help you check things off your bucket list and his. With 24 trusted brands by Wyndham to choose from, your Wyndham is waiting. Get the lowest price at WyndhamHotels.com. It's got an NFL offer. Don't play with me. Then I'm going to take it. Aren't you a little too old to be playing football? W wait, what? They want somebody that can run a 40, not somebody that is 40. When the coach calls your number, you're going to say, G56, bingo. How you going to celebrate a win? You going to give everybody butterscotch candy? Probably out your pocket with no wrappers on it. Just gonna give them raw candy. That's nasty, by the way. With DraftKings, new customers bet five bucks to get 200 instantly in bonus bets and a month of NFL Plus Premium. The crown is yours. There wouldn't be an hour in the day that I wouldn't think about my hair thinning. I hid under my hat for a good three years. I experienced many challenges with prescribed medication. Losing your sex drive feels very shameful. My dermatologist recommended Nutrafol. It's 100% drug-free and clinically tested. Within three months, there was new growth. My hair was stronger, and I don't have to choose between my health or my hair. Try the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement brand at Nutrafol.com. Whoa, Nelly. iPhone 15. With tons of storage. I really want one. Yo, you've won 14 times on the LPJ Tour. Since when is one enough for you? That is true. Get your head out of the sand trap, switch to T-Mobile, <laughs> and get four iPhone 15s on them. And four lines for just 25 bucks a line. And you can save on every plan versus the other big guys. Swing big at T-Mobile. Get four iPhone 15s on us and four lines for 25 bucks a line. Four! The thing about favorites is, they're only your favorite until a new favorite tells your old favorite to beat it. Introducing the all-new Sonic Smasher. So good, it's about to be your next new favorite. Yo, I'm not a big fan of change, but I'm willing to try it. Mm. I gotta tell people about this. Yo. The all-new Sonic Smasher. Live free. Eat Sonic. Wanna live free? Of the seven crew members, only one survived. Blowing the creature out of the airlock. We've been searching for it ever since. The perfect organism. Rated R. Now playing. The 12 team college football playoff is here. So let's dig into how the teams can punch their playoff tickets. The 12 team college football playoff will feature the five highest ranked conference champions, plus the next seven highest ranked teams, as determined by the CFP selection committee. The four highest ranked conference champions will be seated one through four and receive first round buys, with the fifth highest ranked conference champion being seated where it was ranked or at number 12, if its final ranking lands outside of the top 12. So that's who gets in, which brings us to where and when the games we play. The eight teams seated five through 12 will play in the first round starting on December 20th, with the teams seated five through eight hosting a home game, meaning the pageantry of on-campus college football is coming to the playoff for the first time. Man, that is gonna be incredible. From there, the playoff will play out as dictated by the bracket with no reseeding between rounds. The quarterfinals and semifinals will be played at traditional New Year's Six bowl game locations, followed by the national championship game in Atlanta where our first 12-team college football playoff national champion will be crowned on January 20th, only on ESPN. 
Kirk did a beautiful job explaining that. Let me show you how this would look in practice. Let's say we had that system with the conference affiliations that we had a year ago. Now, the rankings from the College Football Playoff Committee on the left side of your screen, this is pretty straightforward. Michigan, Washington, Texas, Alabama, the four highest ranked conference champions. That's not controversial. That's numbers one, two, three, and four, with Florida State getting the fifth spot, number five. But here's what you have to get ready for is starting to look at what it would have looked like in 2022, the previous year. Now, the college football playoff rankings on the left again, pretty easy at the start. Georgia SEC champion number one, Michigan Big Ten champion number two. But why are Clemson and Utah getting the buys? Because if you look at the rankings, TCU, Ohio State, Alabama, Tennessee, not conference champions. Therefore, they can't get the buy into the quarterfinal. Then you start seeing them after that. Clemson would have been the third seed as the champions of the ACC, and with the Pac-12 still in existence, Utah would have been the fourth seed. Then you go back to the rankings and fill out the rest, and in this case, Tulane, which would have been ranked just outside of the top 12, would have gotten the final bid. We're showing you this because I want you to get ready. The rankings may not look like the seeding, so that's an important piece of terminology to think about. Rankings versus seed. Yeah, so if Notre Dame's two at the end. They're five. They're five. Notre, right. That's what Nick was talking about yeah. earlier. Notre Dame cannot be received by into the quarterfinals of the bracket. The highest they can be seeded is five. Desmond, 12-team bracket. Who's in yours? First of all, the tutorial you did, Kirk, was brilliant. I was on my phone. I had to pause <laughs> to take notes. It was brilliant. No. <laughs> my 12 teams, Oregon, Georgia, Miami, Utah, Texas, Ole Miss, let's go Lane, Ohio State, Michigan, Oklahoma, Clemson, Notre Dame, and Liberty. I like, nice. I like where your head's like at it. there with your okay, champions. Like, right. Who's a champion? You got Utah. You said you liked them earlier out of the Big yeah. 12. Fascinating. Yeah, keep Cam healthy. Yes. 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 He's a pig farmer, right? No, no. Is he the pig farmer? No, no. Oh, that's no, the pack no, 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 no. Like a Bryson yeah. Barr. Yeah. We him. had a great time out of Utah last yeah. year. Sure he did. was on the show with us. Yeah, they were fantastic. Yeah, was beautiful, too. Nick, who you got in your 12 team bracket? <laughs> Well, I, I've got Georgia, Ohio State, Florida State, Utah. Those are my four by teams. Then Texas, Oregon, Alabama, and Ole Miss, the next four. The two teams that haven't been talked about very much is Penn State and LSU. I think, I think Penn State has got a really good team, a good culture. They would have been in the playoff with a 12-team playoff the last couple of years. I think LSU, I think Garrett Nesmeyer is going to be one of the yeah. all-time sleepers in college football this year at quarterback. LSU always has skill guys. They're talking about all the receivers they lost. You could shake a tree in Louisiana. And, <laughs> and them guys would fall out. So I got Liberty getting in. And then, you know, you're going to have some teams that are in that 12 spot, like Missouri, Clemson, Tennessee. I mean, and it's going to be, it's going to be crazy. How much do you love that, huh? Making the that predictions. Isn't that fun? What that fun? This is the ultimate hypothetical situation. And Matt Garrett. And Jonathan Wiley, yeah. if you were in a press conference right now, you would be getting eight out by me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Big Red behind the scenes tells us, Nick, we need these He's answers, our sir. producer. <laughs> eight yeah. out. I'd be wearing them out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Gary Sorry. just had a dream come true, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start uh, the four teams that I think are going to buy with the conference championship. I'm going to go with Georgia coming out of the SEC. I'm with you. Ohio State, Clemson, I have in the ACC, Utah coming out of the Big 12. And then after that, I get Oregon, Texas, Missouri, and Penn State. You mentioned Penn State. I have them all getting the buys. And there's the teams that are going to have to go to ride. Boise State is that group of five at 12. They'll be on the road. Michigan, I do have in the playoff. Florida State, I have in the playoff. Notre Dame, I have in the playoff at nine. And my two that are just on the outside, I got Ole Miss. Because I want to, like you guys said, if not yeah. win kind yeah. of thing. I want to see if. This is the year they can get over the hump and beat some of those big teams. And Oklahoma State My also. on the outside, I have Penn State and Alabama. I didn't mention those two. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Well, yeah. thank you for uh, the heads up. You, you, yeah. you, you totally disrespected Alabama, man. I can't yeah. believe that. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know what? Kirk did put Florida I mean, State in there, though. I did. Nick did not. So yeah. 
Now, they, they've left <laughs> ahead to the stadium yeah, already. Yeah, 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 they're, 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 they got a game to but go. But Kurt yeah. just tried to win them back over. They're no, gone. I'm being, I'm they being honest. Gone. I'm being honest. I'm being honest. I'm being honest. So I have, a, I have a little different uh, the hell? for I'm just conference saying champions. I, I see yeah. the same picture you guys see. Georgia, I think, obviously. Yeah. Uh, Ohio State with the Big Ten. Mm. West Virginia is going to win the Big 12. <laughs> Virginia Tech, I think, wins the ACC. Now, they're at plus 1,000 right wow. now, so that's quite a long shot if you want to go ahead and pull the trigger on a team with 20 starters returning. Boise State, I think they're the power five group or a group of five that's coming out. Ole Miss is dancing. Florida State, Michigan, Alabama, Oregon, Utah, and Texas rounded out. And then look out for Oklahoma State. And if Penn State can survive that week one matchup in Morgantown, there's a chance they, <laughs> they get in there as well. But what I think what we're all saying here is we have dreamt of this situation. Last year, when we were talking about what the 12-team playoff could look like in the middle of the season, we put it up and we were just like, that would be awesome. All of those different 12-team brackets right there would be awesome. The home field advantage, too, in that first round, so we really get to celebrate what college football is about. It's going to be a wonderful season. I, I love what Coach keeps bringing up in all of our meetings, you know, uh, whether it's been Zoom or even this week. He, he, you love the idea that... Instead of talking four and then maybe five, six, and seven, and everyone else, it's almost like you're eighth or ninth in the country. It's like it's irrelevant. Now it's going to open up September, October, into November. It's not just the 12. It's going to be 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, maybe into the 20s of thinking, man, if we can win that game and finish nine and three, we can, we're still in this thing. We still got a shot. And in the past, that hope was gone. They had no chance of being in that discussion. That's, that's exciting. Yeah, if you lost one game, unless you lost early like we did to Texas last year, if you lost one game anywhere toward the back half of the season, you're out. Yeah. And I, but I do think that that's going to create something for teams like Georgia that are going to have to bounce back if they have a loss and be able to, you know, go play, keep getting better, because that's how it is in the NFL. You know, in the NFL, if the owners could have their way, everybody would be 8-8 eight and eight after 16 weeks so that every fan base is still there. Week right. 17. Yeah. All right. So you're going to have more of that in college football now, which we've never had before, which is going to be fantastic. Well, I think the reason why you bring it up, too, is because coaches talking to their team after one devastating loss in a lot of cases, it's like, well, what do we still want to play? For? What do we still now? It's like you got something to play for. Boom. Yeah. Still yeah. got messaging. Still yeah. got dreams. Yeah. Everything in front of you. Yep. Your mic's off, Steve. Steve okay. off again. Yeah, uh, I think the biggest thing also, guys, is the idea with all those teams and the multiple teams from the conferences, nobody's saying we're going to have an uh, undefeated team. Like, there's going to be te I don't fans. Fans are going to have to get used to seeing multiple losses next to teams yeah. in that bracket, which we haven't seen. To your point, Coach, you talked about losing them one game at the end, and you're out. Now you're going to see teams with multiple losses, even losing late. That was going to be my there. question. And the other, the other point is how are we going to perceive the teams that lose the conference championship game? Forever, it's been, you're out. Yeah. Well, no, you know? it in, and yeah. now I almost think you're automatically in, knowing the road it is with no more divisions and how, how well you have to there, play there throughout the course few, of the season. Yeah, there have been a few instances, you know, where teams have lost the conference championship. Georgia. You know, well, we lost conference championship games. Still got reality is not last, right year. Like, not last year. But We're going to have nine and three teams in this playoff. And, and we should How great is that? Hey, you yeah. know, Nick has brought, <laughs> Nick has brought <laughs> I, I, that up. I just mean it's – that's. we, we may mean, never see a team just it's go really, undefeated and win it all. It's really incumbent on the Probably committee not. to look at how you played, how you won, who you, Where played, you played, when you did it. All of those things, instead of just stacking them up, say all the zeros go ahead of all the ones. No, all yeah, ones that's not what it is. That's been the biggest trap. Yeah. How many games you win, not strength of schedule, where you played, who you lost to, Night how you game. lost. All Night those games. things matter. Yeah. But you got to you got to remember, though, with this great sport that we all love, we are trying to undo about 100 years of history and tradition of the yeah. way they've been yeah. stacked up and used to vote for national championships. We're closing in on the kickoff. Of oh, Tech. old Crimson. Uh, Piecing together a schedule, the two pack, the pack two still left oh, along well, the way. Well, but here they are, well, 303 the straight. Now the crowd is still down because the stadium is about a mile and a half away, getting ready for the start of week zero. Man, they put on a show for us this morning here at College Green. XO factors of this week zero start between Florida State and Georgia Tech. We've heard a little bit from Norvell and from Brent Key about some of those things. And Seamus will be here as our celebrity guest picker.
Arby's is full of choices. You can get your favorite stuff three for five dollars. Incredible value. Reach in and eat whatever you grab. Arby's, we have the meats. In Ireland, golf is more than just a game. Come and experience our world-famous Lynx courses and our world-famous Parkland courses, all set alongside world-famous scenery. And visit our world-famous historic sites. And while you're here, enjoy our world-famous hospitality. Fill your heart with Ireland at ireland.com forward slash golf. Goldfish and chips. Together as one. Goldfish crisps. Light and airy. Totally irresistible. Taste how goldfish does chips. All right, Tina, six is hard to beat. Not for us. Okay, not soccer, but... Football. Yes. We honeymooned here. Mallorca. Yes. Uh, uh, pass. Oh, we don't pass, Tina. Uh, Come on, um, they help give you more. A tax professional. And they have a 97% satisfaction rating. So happy. You, uh, you could have done it in a British accent. That's helpful, Randy. For savings and service, get more with Geico. On a hyped up Fansville by Dr. Pepper. All aboard the hype train. We're going all the way. I heard this hype train runs an ice cold Dr. Pepper. And the hopes of overly optimistic fans. Hey guys, check out my new tattoo. We are so winning it all. Even the national media agrees. And they're never wrong about anything. Oh wait, our quarterback got injured in practice. Okay, everyone off the hype train. Oh, well, that didn't last long. College football, it's a pepper thing. Want the effects of Viagra, but faster? Meet Rose Sparks. They contain sildenafil and tadalafil, but sparks dissolve under the tongue. Dissolvables work faster than old school pills. Connect with a medical provider at roco slash sparks. Arby's is full of choices. Quick, you can get your favorite stuff. stuff, stuff. Three for five dollars. Incredible value. value. For a limited time, reach in and eat whatever you grab. Arby's, we have the meats. All right, sandworms out of the basement and the furnace has been exercised. Another progressive home and auto bundle fully protected from the unexpected. Beetlejuice caused quite a ruckus, huh? Jamie, don't say his name. Beetlejuice? Saying his name three times is how you summon him. Right. What if I say other words in between? Does that restart it? Don't overthink it. Or what if I broke it up into two parts? Like someone said, what's your favorite bug? Beetle. What's your favorite morning beverage? Juice. Juice. Oh. You're welcome. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice in theater September 6th. If your business needs a new application, then developers will have to write code. A lot of code. If an application needs to be modernized, then you'll need time, resources, and caffeine. If this sounds daunting, then use Watson X Code Assistant, AI designed to multiply developer productivity so you can generate code quickly. Let's create a more modern foundation for business with Watson X Code Assistant. IBM, let's create. Cutting <laughs> <laughs> through the heart of Dublin today, the lead us to the start of the college football stadium, the Viva the season, the Viva Stadium, Florida State and Georgia Tech, ACC showdown in the Aerolingus Classic here in Ireland. The stadium sits near the harbor's edge. This is where they play the blood sport games in Ireland, the rugby grudge matches. In this quiet little neighborhood where Dubliners can reach out their window and touch the stadium. On the weekends, this place turns into a cathedral of noise and energy. All the work, all the planning has led to this day and this place. It feels poetic this week, as college football, this most American of games, comes back to the country where so many American families began where so many continue to nurture and protect their roots. Ireland is a mythical place of churches and cows, ghosts and family secrets and traditions. Of people who both revere home and also leave it, generation after generation. 
the college game sure feels at home here. A place where a pre-game drink, or three, or seven, sounds about right. So raise a glass to the college game finally being back. Ireland and Dublin are a place rooted in tribalism, faith, and in honoring the triumphs and sorrows of the past. There were triumphs, there were sorrows for the Seminoles a year ago, and now putting it behind them starting this 2024 season against the Yellow Jackets as Florida State taking the field and Georgia Tech hoping to pull the upset against the 10th ranked team in the country. They're led by Haynes King who visited with Katie George. Haynes, you led a record breaking offense a year ago. What can we expect from your group today given all the key pieces are back? Just go out there, have fun, play fast and be disciplined. Florida State lost a lot of key pieces on defense, still extremely talented. What are some points of emphasis for you today against this defense? Just control what we can control. Uh, Got to execute. Uh, Communication is going to be big, um, coming on and off the field. And that, that's the main thing, just be us. Speaking of communication, there's some subtle differences this season, especially for quarterbacks. What's it been like using the in-helmet communication? Oh, it's wonderful. You know, I, I get to play earlier. Uh, now we get to have a faster operation just because of that. Well, best of luck today. Thanks. Thank you. Coach's son from the state of Texas started his career. Texas A&M, he's been terrific. He's going to have to have, when he played well last year, they had an opportunity to win, Kirk. When he didn't, they really did. Yeah, I, I just listened to him talk there with Katie. He just has a, a presence about it. You know, I mean, and to, to be able to deal with high school football in the state of Texas with a dad who's around that his whole life, he's got composure. He's got poise. So I don't think this atmosphere or the travel or any of that, to have him leading your way to give you a chance to compete, I think is big. I think at the end of the day, we had Brent Key on earlier. It's about the line of scrimmage, especially in week one. Can they physically match up against Florida State, who is completely reloaded with Adam Fuller, their defensive coordinator? We know about the edge guys with Marvin Jones coming over from Georgia. We know about Patrick Payton. But the interior, can Brent Key take some of the pressure off of Haynes King with a 16 turnover or interceptions last year by getting that running game with Jamal Haynes going today? Well, you know what I think is because the way this quarterback plays, they're in Wildcat. People don't know what Wildcat is, but they're running quarterback runs every other play, multiple formations, multiple motions. And I think one of the things that defensive coordinators have really gotten into with all these no huddle looks is they, they call the picture. In other words, a team comes out of what I call Dolphin, which is two by two, four wide. And that's what they call the defense that works best against that. You're going to see with the communication to the quarterback, you're going to see more huddles. You're going to see more speed breaks. You're going to see more shifts and motions on offense so that the defensive coordinators can't do that. And I think Georgia Tech does that as well as anybody. They have an extra gap every time they run the ball because of the quarterback run. So if they can make some explosive plays, they have an advantage for themselves. But I think Florida State obviously has the bigger, faster team. Yeah, and on the other side, they're showing DJ Uyunglele right there. Uh, fantastic name, but also very mature. You know, if you think about what happened with Bo Nix when he was at Auburn, runs out of town, gets sent up to Oregon, now obviously plays a lot of ball there. DJ Clemson, out of town, a lot of ball in Oregon State, gets better, comes back with Norvell. The team they have, the size they have, the maturity that DJ Uyunglele has on the football field now, it's going to be a great, this is going to be a fantastic game to start the entire season. I agree with you. Don't forget, now, they want to run the ball. Don't get it twisted. Florida State, they returned four offensive linemen from a year ago. They have a stable of running backs. People talk about how DJ is built. He can run the ball, too. He's a dual-threat quarterback, but he's more of a pocket passer. He wants to sit back there because of his maturity now. He wants to go through his progression, read the defenses, see things that maybe a younger quarterback wouldn't be able to see. And that's what he brings to this Florida State offense now. You know, you know, Florida State didn't run the ball well last year. It was the worst rushing offense Norvell had had since he was at Memphis in 2016. To point to Memphis. Toa Feely is the guy you're, you're seeing there, but Roydell Williams, who was on coach's uh, backfield last year, 
He's a guy to watch. I'm telling you, we just saw him briefly. They're looking at Patrick Payton on the defense side right now. But to go back to the offense, Jalen Douglas, 13. If there's a name to remember today, you're going to say, who the heck's that? Transfer out of IU. Mm. He gets his hands on the ball. Very different. Roy Dill Williams, more of a thumper, can get north and south. This Jalen Douglas, they get him in space. So they got three big time a back that can go. Lucas. Jalen yeah. Lucas. Jalen Lucas. Yeah, I apologize. Jalen Lucas. I was really impressed with DJ and watching practice yesterday. But they have three Alabama players starting for Florida State on offense. Guard, wide receiver, and tailback. Yeah. All have been mentioned. Yeah, Malik Benson. They'll yeah. do just fine on offense. How does that make you feel? <laughs> How does that make you feel? That's a compliment, right? Obviously a compliment. Yeah. You take it that yeah. way? Yeah, I love them. Okay, good. They got another receiver, too. A, a transfer from LSU named Jalen Brown. Miami kid can blow the lid off the top of a defense. Make sure you watch out for Jalen Brown, too. He may get the start today. That's a great call. Florida State guys, one of their offensive coaches told me last night, he's had an unbelievable camp. A great call to watch out for him, the LSU transfer. There is, there is Haynes King. Kirk, you mentioned he turned it over a little bit more than certainly Brent Keir, Georgia Tech, would have liked. There's Jamal Haynes. He visited with his parents pregame show. Before they went over to the stadium, they were down here in the front row, college game day. Big play threat for the Yellow Jackets. Yeah, and, and you know coming in, they're going to have that underdog mentality, you know, that blue-collar approach that Brent Key has. They're going to have to stay in this game. They cannot get shocked. There's Benson, the Alabama transfer, who with, with, with the Keon Coleman stepping away and Johnny Wilson, these guys going to the NFL, Benson really has to become that vertical threat with that size. So Georgia Tech, the only way they stay in this game is they got to be in it at half, not let the game get away from them because of the overall athletic ability and this big playability of Florida State. Watching this warm-up right is make me feel a certain way. You know, I listened to that Haynes interview, and then now I'm watching how Florida State is acting right now. Yeah. It, it, it appears that the Seminoles are uh, vibing, I, I do believe, <laughs> is a... They, 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 they were very good, high energy in practice yesterday, no question. But one thing about Georgia Tech that I think Brent Key has brought to them, they embrace the physical style of play which has helped them, I think, run the ball more effectively. Hopefully, it'll help them play a little better on defense, which could really help them be a lot more successful this year. That's the big question. It's just can they hold up defensively against so much speed? Size. Florida, yeah, size up front. Florida State stretches you uh, horizontally, stretch you vertically, and then you've got the run game to deal with with the line of scrimmage that favors them up front. Number 10, Florida State against Georgia Tech. He's never lost to a ranked ACC opponent. We use it because that note is either going to be obsolete or it's going to be foreshadowed. There are Seminoles and like, Yellow Jackets at the top. I mean, it's what? real football. Hey, Let's it's watch a real warm-up right yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I am it's so go time. excited. Yeah, it's it's go go time. Time. Right. We're in the middle of Dublin hey, right now. Hey, it's been a long summer. It has it's been a long it's summer. It's time to get football going. And you love hypotheticals. You like making predictions. Well, on the other side of this break, <laughs> we're going to do that. And the first celebrity guest picker of the year is a man who was born and raised in Dublin, Ireland. 15 years as a WWE superstar. It's Fight Night! Baby! Baby! Sheamus is his name. <laughs> yeah, he drank a lot of beers last night. A lot of them. <laughs> I don't know how he feels this great. <laughs> He's the man. Let's go! Let's go! Wow. Literally. Wow. From pulling pints on the Pat McAfee show yesterday to being the guest picker, the first one this year on College Game Day, all in your hometown of Dublin, Ireland. How are you feeling right now? How am I doing? I'm living the dream here. I'm in the greatest city in the world. It is pretty amazing. Think about it. You can't get to the help but get sucked into how awesome this is. Everyone's having the time of their lives. We probably got the best weather of the year as well right now. It's actually miraculously not raining, which is amazing. But either way, I'm ready. Let's do those. Let's do those picks, fella. Well, I was gonna say, did you did you study up on your college football? Oh yeah. It's all up That's here. all up there. Well, best of luck. The guys are waiting for you. Go make your picks. Boy, let's go! We'll be back for the pigs. Don't go anywhere. The truth about DIY is you never really do it all by yourself. Because this setup took two videos and a quick demo. You can change your color here. And all of this started here, detoured here, and ended down here. And this pizza wasn't delivery. This was. I wonder if they have. They do have it. We do. 
So whenever you start a project, don't worry, you're not alone. We can do this together. So what are you working on? The thing about favorites is they're only your favorite until a new favorite tells your old favorite to beat it. Introducing the all new Sonic Smasher. So good, it's about to be your next new favorite. Yo, I'm not a big fan of change, but I'm willing to try it. Mm. I gotta tell people about this. Yo. The all new Sonic Smasher. Live free, eat Sonic. Wanna live free? Hey, oh. A promise is a trust not to be broken. Whether spoken with an oath or sealed with a pinky. And after 100 years, we're still taking care of the military community and their families. That's our mission, always. In 16 years, Greg Gerstner will land the perfect cannonball with friends he's already meeting now at AARP volunteer and community events to help make sure his happiness lives as long as he does. The younger you are, the more you need AARP. Who just picked up Buffalo Wild Wings Go? The Hankster! Hank! What? Jimmy already got B-dubs Go. Yeah, Jimmy already got B-dubs Go. Jimmy already got B-dubs Go? Jimmy already got B-dubs Go. Okay, Jimmy already got B-dubs Go delivered. But did he get 10 free boneless wings? Yeah. No! There's nothing chill about a hot, sweaty line. Unless... You add mountain cold refreshment. Coors Light. Choose chill. Welcome to Williamsport. Two weeks of baseball bliss. This is where fantasy and reality come together. Where the game is still a game. They just love to play. Welcome to the International and United States Championships on ABC. Sorry, honey, it's a work thing. Mine's also a work thing. I just need someone to cover my shift. So is mine. Alan says your business vehicle is now covered with Progressive. Protected 24-7, just like your home and auto. Oh, that's great. So dinner time's just phone time now? Sorry. You know, I heard that ground turkey is the healthiest poultry. You know what, never mind, just be on your phone. Oh, that's Thank so much. you. Whoa, likelihood to win, 2%. Bring it, James Blake. You, you still want me to bring it? The surf and volley game is really the difference in this match. Yeah, you think? Relax, Bob. She's not talking about our match. Those are AI-generated insights about the US Open from IBM Watson X. It's also using generative AI to produce match reports for hundreds of matches. So you're saying I still have a chance? You got two chances, slim and none. Who's got next? College Game Day is built by The Home Depot. How doers get more done. And in part by Coors Light, Mountain Cold Refreshment. Choose chill. Celebrate responsibly. It's been a great morning here in Dublin. Time now for our AT&T Game Day check down as you watch the work that the crew did. They didn't close the street until last night. So wow. overnight they built this great set right in the middle of town. What great work these guys do. Part of our family, we appreciate all of us. Pete Thamel joins us for the AT&T Game Day Checkdown. Reese, as you mentioned earlier in the show, FSU receiver Hakeem Williams is out with a minor injury. He's expected back soon, but he will not be out there at receiver for FSU today. For Georgia Tech, we heard Coach Saban mention Haynes King and the advantages he brings in the run game. I've been told to expect Zach Pyron, the reserve quarterback, to come in situationally, save Haynes King some hits, and still give them that advantage in the run game. And then we'll end with Alex Atkins, the offensive coordinator for Florida State. He starts a three-game suspension today. It's an NCAA suspension from a violation of NIL, which is now, of course, legal. Gabe Fertitta will be the backup offensive line coach. He will fill in for Atkins. Mike Norvell obviously calls the plays, so the operation will stay consistent. Atkins, a rising star in the coaching industry, might even have to sneak into a pub to watch the game. That's the day. He's been a big part of the pre-game preparation. This is the goal. <coughs> Celebrity guest picker from last year, our friend Joel McHale, Washington Husky, won the won the competition 11 and 2. He was holding a dog. You remember that? Uh, and painted. Painted the whole body. Body paint, <laughs> holding a dog, 11 and 2. Phenomenal work. But now, 
ready to set the standard as he has so many times in the squared circle, the stages and the rings of the WWE. There's your friend Sheamus. That's right, that's a little white noise there. There's a bro kick. This guy makes people's souls leave their bodies. And uh, last night he showed us the town he grew up in. And <laughs> <laughs> Sheamus is a good time. Sheamus is a great time, but he's also prepared, very prepared. I just say that uh, you were like Lazarus last night. Just kept coming back from the dead over and over and over again. I thought you'd like, gone about three or four times. Just kept coming back. It's great to be home, which I assume you feel the exact same way. Amazing, mate. Nothing like you. And this is how the weather always is. Uh, yeah. I think it's a miracle happened here in Ireland. It's normally raining every single day. This is probably the best day we've got in about 20 oh, years. You, you ready to set the standard right. on these picks, Seamus? You ready to set the standard on these picks? Yeah, Dr. I'm going to give it a go, mate. You know what I mean? Right. Got to give beat, it a go. Got to beat the Rock. Let's do Eight it. Two, Here's right. where we're going to start with a few of the games that will be played before next Saturday. Starting on Thursday night, North Carolina takes its only road trip longer than 10 miles until the end of October when they take on P.J. Fleck and Minnesota. Who you got as a winner? You know, the biggest problem with Minnesota last year was the quarterback play. Cole Kramer got hurt, so then they, he just fell off the map. They went out and got a quarterback from the FCS named Max Brosmer. Now, Max was a finalist for the Walter Payton Award down in New Hampshire. That's the FCS equivalent to a Heisman. So this is going to be the difference in this game. He's also an artist. He has a song out called Old Jack Daniels, too. What? Check it out on YouTube. Yeah. So you guys I'm going sing about Jack Daniels? Absolutely. Oh. Guys, he plays the guitar and everything, bro. <laughs> yeah, so I got Minnesota. <laughs> I love that guy. I like, I like North Carolina. I just think, you know, Mac Brown's done a really good job there for a long time, does a good job of recruiting. I know they got some key players to replace, including the quarterback. Um, but I just, I just like North Carolina. I just think the speed will be uh, the difference. Hey, that was really good. That was your first pick. Congratulations. There you go. You love it. He loves, favorite he loves it. <laughs> Another hypothetical. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I was picking Minnesota to row the boat uh, before I learned that their quarterback sings about Jack Daniels. I love everything about that. Uh, Drake May obviously was their team for a while. Led them in rushing two years ago. Absolute superstar quarterback. They weren't able to win all the games last year with him there. I think they'll have to readjust, reassess. Give me Minnesota to row the boat. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump on Pat's thing there. Minnesota for sure. Drake May's gone now, so UNC are going to have a really hard time. So Minnesota for me. I, I, you know, this is, a, this is an interesting game for North Carolina. Mac Brown, I, on the road, you look at their schedule after this game, they could get on a little bit of a run if they settle a quarterback. I think the athletic ability, maybe the best back in all of college football, Omari and Hampton at North yeah. Carolina. Yeah. I think they win this game with Mac Johnson stepping in at quarterback. And I think they're 7 and 0 oh when they go to Tallahassee. How about that? That would be a story. 80% of the people so far in the fans picking North Carolina to win that game. Mm. Colorado and North Dakota State. Now, remember, because of the portal, maybe the FCS schools, some of the talent is spread out a little bit. Great history for the Bison, Shadur Sanders and Sko Buffs. Who yeah. you got? Yeah, North Dakota State is going to be tough. They're going to be disciplined. They're going to come out there on the mission. I just think that Colorado has too much skill. I mean, I think people forget just how talented Travis Hunter is because he got injured a year ago. Shador Sanders, first, first round draft pick. So I think that Colorado will overwhelm North Dakota State. I've, I feel the same way, although I hated these kind of games as a coach where you played a really good FBS team that, you know, could be very competitive with you. But uh, I'm all for Coach Prime, man. He's, he's doing a great job at Colorado. Uh, his son is a great quarterback, uh, and I think that'll be the difference in the game. And I think they'll take the next step in terms of a team this year, and they'll start out with a win the first week. Ah, Flack. Uh, so, <laughs> Coach Rule, when he came on my show, yeah, we know, yeah. Coach we Rule, got, got when he came on uh, my show to chit-chat about the job at Nebraska, he said one of the first conversations he had with the athletic director was, our non-conference games, I don't want any of the teams to have a Dakota in it. I don't, I, don't, I don't want there to be a South Dakota. I don't want there to be a North Dakota. If there's a West Dakota, I don't want any of them. North Dakota, South Dakota, they're great football teams. They obviously have great coaching, great tradition. With that being said, Warren Sapps around the Colorado program. Yep. Ed Reed has been around the Colorado program over the last couple of days. Thanks. Prime's there. Yep. Another year. Give me Colorado. But this is going to be a much better game, I think, than a lot of the Colorado fans could imagine. I just feel like I'm ripping you off all the time because I was at Colorado picked as well. Um, huge uh, 
they beefed up their offense line and defense line, so they just look like just a bunch of monsters. Dude, it's a there. prep. He was oh. hanging out with Tone. Hanging out with Tone. Did yeah, some, yeah, yeah. yeah, a little bit, a little, a little <laughs> meat, a little bit more. The meat in that team. Yeah. You know I what I mean? I think we all see this about the same. We, we have respect for for North uh, North Dakota State. But the athletic ability, the big play ability of what uh, Coach Prime's team has with his son, the receivers that he has, I'm with you, Pat. I think it's a little bit closer. They're going to have to fight for this, but uh, I got to see you. Stanford moving to the ACC, plays its first game as a member of that conference, taking on TCU. These two have opened up a few times. This will be a Friday night game, 10.30 Eastern time on ESPN. Looks like the Frogs are about a nine-point favorite right now. You know, you, you wonder what happened to TCU. I mean, after they got embarrassed in the national championship game by Georgia, they opened up the next season losing the embarrassing game to Colorado and Deion Sanders. So they only won three conference games last year. It's almost like they took 2023 off. I think they bounced back, though, in 2024. I think they're going to beat Stafford. They're going to have a really good year. Yeah, I, I'm all for TCU on this one. I think Sonny Dykes is a really good coach, and I think these guys will have a lot to prove, you know, this season after some of the disappointments of a year ago and the way they performed in the national championship against Georgia. So I do think that uh, TCU will come out with a vengeance and get a win on this one. Stanford, Steve, any reason I should pick Stanford here? No. All right. <laughs> I'll, take C I'll take TCU. I'll take TCU. Yeah, TCU. Stanford just stink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This pretty much sums pretty it much. up. I'll go, I'll go TCU. <laughs> Great school, though. Yeah. Big brains, really cool campus. Yeah. Just the team we're talking about. We're just talking about the team. Football. Yeah. Football. Yeah, yeah, football. Yeah, yeah. Football. This is usually where yeah. I go that's the other way. trouble. I, I, Steve, can't do it. Back, <laughs> can't, can't hey, do Reece, it that's time, back, to back. back Back to back. Back to back. Can't do it. Can't do it. It's week zero. Can't do it. Maybe now, though. So let's pick some conference champions. Got a hit at this. You guys unveiled. Your 12-team okay. playoff bracket. So ACC play starts at the top of the hour down at Aviva Stadium. Yeah. Florida State and Georgia Tech playing. Who ends up winning the Atlantic Coast Conference? Neither one of those two teams. I have Cam Award in the Miami Hurricanes. Okay. No one you. The you know. U's back, Coach. The what you U's at? back. Well, I, I think that Florida State and Clemson are neck and neck with Miami. Also very competitive, but since they. Clemson has to go to Florida State. I pick Florida State. They may play again in the championship game, but they may get Miami. So one of those three teams is going to come out of this, but I'm picking Florida State. Love NC State. Love Clemson. Love Florida State. Love this Georgia Tech team because they got Davis Shanahan, the punter from Ireland, bombing balls for them. But for me, long shot, Virginia Tech is who I uh, absolutely love this year. A lot of returning starters. Read option quarterback. All offensive linemen are back going to be tough to handle, especially with a home field advantage that they have. Yeah, I, I'm going to go with the team who has Kirk's biggest supporters club, and that's uh, FSU. So yeah. I'm, I'm going to go FSU yeah. for the ACC. Yeah. I, I thought I was going to have to have you hanging around me if I stayed here much than, more, more than 10 hours. I haven't been here long. <laughs> hey, pay me uh, enough, pay me enough fellow to hang around. Uh, I, 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 I think, as long as they're buying as well, man, I'm good. I think uh, yeah, we can do that for sure. I, I, I got the, de the depth of this conference this year is going to be much better than it's been. You, you just heard the guys go through the, the list of teams, some of the obvious ones with Clemson and Florida State, Miami. You're right about Virginia Tech, North Carolina State, North Carolina, Georgia Tech. This is a different league this year than it's been in the past. With that being said, I think people are sleeping on Clemson, making fun of Dabo. It's exactly what he wants, playing right into Clemson. Clemson's going to win the ACC. They're going to be a, a, get a bye in that playoff. Big Ten champion. Big Ten champ, I'm going with um, the Oregon Ducks. I think they're going to surprise a lot of people. I think Oregon's going to win the conference. I've got the Oregon Ducks. They just got made their day over there. Look, you, you, you would Look ne them. never ever. be able to pick Ohio State. <laughs> ever, ever. <laughs> they flew all the way over just to hear that. Yeah. There, there would be nothing that could get you to do that. It would be like giving the benefit of a doubt to someone who just earned reasonable doubt. <laughs> I, I get you. Well, I think Ohio State and Oregon are the two teams in this league that uh, – obviously have the best opportunity to win a championship, but I think Ohio State's going to be a little better in the trenches. I think that's going to be Oregon's problem up front, offensive line, defensive line, playing in this league week in and week out. So I'm picking Ohio State. Michigan going to be a lot better than anybody thinks. I'm on the same side as Kirk Herbstreit from earlier. Oregon's awesome. Love what Lanning's doing. Coming into a new conference, though, that's... That would be a wild move, just come in and just win the Big Ten outright immediately. Yeah. It, it has to be the Ohio State Buckeyes, just strictly because of the amount of investment, the amount of time, everything that's taken place over the last few years. I think the Buckeyes have to finally win one here. 
Yeah, Ohio have the best, I think they've got the best roster in years. They just, they look really, really impressive. Uh, my next door neighbor's a huge Ohio State fan. She takes care of my dog so, uh, when I'm away, so I'm going to have to go to Ohio State. Smart. What kind, yeah. of, what kind of dogs do you have? Uh, we've got mutts. A lot of oh, mutts, okay. you know. How many you got? We had four, we now have three. Any oh, okay. sweet names? Like any super... Uh, yeah, uh, Frodo. Uh, he's Great name. Basset Hound Mix. Short legs, big feet. Named after it. Looks like a hobbit of a dog. Yeah. And then we got Betty. <laughs> Uh, we got uh, we got Don, who's the the leader of the pack, the That's smallest the leader. dog. Yeah. That's the alpha. That's she's the alpha. Yeah. I uh, we, lo we love dogs on this show. I, I I'm gonna go with Ohio State, but I am gonna say that Oregon. We'll talk about in a second. Michigan. I talked about earlier. I think Michigan's gonna be a team that gets into the playoff. I think they're gonna be much better despite all the losses. But boy, Penn State, if Drew Aller and those receivers come along, James Franklin could have a great team this year. Let's think of this as if we're in a two-minute offense here. Big 12 champ. Oh, so we talked a lot about this team earlier. So a lot of this is going to be dependent upon their quarterback's health, Utah. Yeah, I'm all with Utah. You know, with Cam Rising coming back and the physical play that Utah, the way they played defense in the past, I, I just think they're, they're the team to beat in that league. Derek Green's running wild, brother. West Virginia's winning the Big 12. No players ranked in the top 100. Neil Brown grew a goatee. He put an American flag hat Saw on that. and said, I'm sick of the disrespect, so am I. West Virginia wins the Big 12. Oh. Saw the goatee? It's all the lack of respect. He, he's like, I don't know who's voting on this. You said the goatee, though. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's the, yeah, that's the key. Difference. Yeah, West Virginia. Uh, Pat bribed me on the way over. Uh, he said if I pick West Virginia today, I get free ride, uh, free plane rides to Raw every week. So <laughs> you're in. That's I'm good in. business. I'm in. Yeah. I'm in. Hey, that's good All business, right. baby. It's not bad. It's not bad. <laughs> yeah, forget it. I got Utah. Cam Rising's being back. He's healthy. I think Utah's the team to beat coming out of the Pac-12 into the Big 12. All right. What about the SEC? Quickly. SEC. I'm going with Georgia. Like I said before, Georgia, Texas, and Alabama. But somebody's got to prove that they can beat Georgia. So I got I to gotta pick Georgia. <laughs> What's that coming down the track, Coach? Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> Georgia Bulldogs for me. AJ Styles, one of the guys I work with, massive George, uh, Bulldogs guy. And uh, obviously they've been so impressive, national champions of the last couple of years as well. Champions. I, I've got Georgia as well. <clears throat> Four, that was an easy one, right? Easy. Easy. Road easy. Games, yeah. That's they the just have to get to the conference championship game. Who wins the national championship? You didn't like my how, my pick for the uh, Big Ten. You're not going to like my national champion pick. I've got Oregon, the Ducks, winning it all. I'm going Dylan Gabriel, baby. Let's go. Oh, that's because you like them skill guys. <laughs> there you have it. But exactly. they do have a great quarterback, and they do have some fantastic skill, but I still go with the fact that somebody has got to prove that they can beat Georgia. Who are they playing? Who are they, who coach, who, who you got them playing? In the national championship game? I got Curious. Oregon playing Georgia. I think that's the top two teams. Oregon, yeah. Oregon and Georgia. Okay. To your point um, about Georgia and proving it, it's like the way last year ended, for the Georgia Bulldogs, with the way Kirby Smart coaches, with the way that locker room is pieced together. They weren't even allowed to complain about not being in a college football playoff because the Florida State fans were complaining so loud. They yep. were the reigning champs, undefeated, lose to a great Alabama team last week of the year. I think Kirby has used all of that all off season. I think you got some mean dogs showing up this year with a lot to prove. Give me Georgia. National champs. We're in Dublin City, we're in Ireland. I gotta go with the fighting Irish snow today. Wow. Hey, I'm hey, telling you, hey, right? Wow. Wow. <laughs> Listen, last year, this street here, Dave Street, is one of the most historic streets in this, in this city. They changed this street from Dame Street to No to Dame Street. And Marcus Freeman has just, he's created this, a, a, a culture of Notre Dame at South Bay, it's unbelievable. One of the, he's gonna be the guy to bring the gold back and there's going to be two plates, two ND plates on this championship at the I end of the it. year. I love that. <laughs> Let's go Irish! I love that. I don't know how I follow that. I, I, uh, I'm with Dez. I, I picked Ohio State to win the Big Ten, but remember, now they get into the playoff. Who makes the run into the playoff? I have Dan Lanning, Dylan Gabriel, and Oregon playing Georgia now what? Now what? in the national championship. I got Oregon winning it all. Okay. Now what, and so now that we've looked ahead, Let's look to the precious present, what's about to kick Notre off at Aviva Stadium. Coors Light, Saturday <laughs> selection. 
Florida State, Georgia Tech here in Dublin. Who wins the game, Desmond? You no, know, we talked about the trenches, and I just think that Florida State is just way too big in the trenches on both sides of the ball for, for Georgia Tech. So I got Florida State winning this game, but it's going to be a competitive game. I think Georgia Tech is going to do a great job in this game of being able to run the ball, control the ball. If they don't turn it over, if they can play a little better defense. But I really think Georgia State's got too much speed and too much size for Georgia Tech to overcome the first game of the season. I'm really looking forward to watching Florida State run the football. You know, with, with this offensive line, the backs they have, taking some of the heat off. Look for DJ to use that running game to set up play action, take shots. I think Haynes King can hang around with Jamal Haynes, but I think Florida State wins this game. I believe that I was going to pick Georgia Tech this morning because of a doofus at the hotel who was a Florida State fan. With that being <laughs> said, everything that's happened this offseason, a lot has been said. This crowd was remarkable. And then when I saw those warm-up clips of that Florida State team and the way they were acting, give me the Seminoles by a lot. I, I like Florida State by a lot uh, here in Ireland. But shout out to this Georgia Tech team and the faithful. You know... My head says F FSU, my head says FSU, but my heart, my heart says Georgia Tech because... <laughs> Listen, <laughs> this country, this guy, I mean this guy. I love this guy. Against the grave. <laughs> I love you, let me hear you loud, I can't hear you, I can't hear you. <laughs> I need some of that. <laughs> thing is, this country is built on underdog stories, and Georgia Tech are an underdog, and we have a carry man doing your, you know what you used to do, punting for Georgia Tech. I, we got to go for Georgia Tech. I got to go. He's taking, I taking, wouldn't be back in the go. country if I didn't pick Georgia Tech. <laughs> <laughs> Georgia Tech is the pick from Sheamus, and we are ready to kick off. Joe football, baby. Jesse Palmer will have the call. Joe, take it away, my friend. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, Reese.